match this color. So what's the difference between this and this? Which one of these is right for me? Propane charcoal or pellet grill? What do you recommend? You have questions and Tools Ace Hardware has the answers. This grilling season, start at your local Tools Ace Hardware with a wide selection of grills from Weber, Big Green Egg, and Traeger, plus all of your grilling accessories and the knowledgeable staff that can answer all of your grilling questions. Tools Ace Hardware, your helpful place for over 30 years. Hi, I'm Jennifer Martinez Gibson, and while I'm not an attorney, I am married to one, Michael T. Gibson. After a decade of working on serious injury cases, my husband has learned that it is a privilege and a blessing to come home every day to his family. He has learned to never take life for granted and always make sure that we are loved and cherished. That is why my husband and his firm are dedicated to fighting for the rights of injured mothers, fathers, husbands, and wives, because nothing is more important than family. If you're hurt in an accident, just know that my firm and my family are here for you. From living room remodels to expansive family-sized kitchens, breathtaking baths, and fun-filled theater rooms. At s and Kitchens, we make sure every detail is designed with you in mind. Let our experts design your dream home today. Fall in love with your home again with s and Kitchens. Get started today with a free designer consultation. Call or visit snwkitchens.com. This is Orlando. This is where we believe in magic and fantasies and wishing upon stars and the power of the imagination. This is where we believe in dreams and seeing them come true. This is Orlando, known around the world as the home of happiness and to those who live here happily as home. This is more than just a place to stay a while. It's a place to stay on the cutting edge. Here, innovation comes in every form, entertainment in every variety, and thriving businesses in every size. So if you think you know all there is to know about Orlando, prepare to be surprised. Because until you get to really know this place, this community, and see all the reasons why it's so magical, rest assured, you don't know the half of it. Chrysler Jeep Ram. This is a Channel 9 Eyewitness News update. Good morning, everyone. It is 8.56. I'm Jamie Holmes. In the news this morning, troopers want to find a driver suspected of road rage that hit and killed a man in Brevard County. 58-year-old Jeffrey Brookshire of Orlando died when his dark blue Mustang was hit from behind on the beach line Saturday by a red car. Witnesses say they saw two vehicles and some kind of road rage exchange. The red car took off after the crash. Troopers say the red vehicle has front-end damage, an endless summer Florida tag, and a hammock hippie sticker on the back. This morning, the Falcon 9 rocket's Block 5 booster is making its way back to Earth after a successful launch early yesterday morning. SpaceX launched the Telstar 19. That's a Canadian communications satellite into orbit just before 2 a.m. yesterday. The satellite is the heaviest commercial communications satellite ever to be launched. All right, certified meteorologist Rusty McCraney in Severe Weather Center 9. The rain is gone now, but not for long. No, it's coming back this afternoon, Jamie, with more storms developing as well. Now, again, we're starting to clear out the skies a little bit. Boy, you know, after this morning rain, it's going to be humid across Central Florida, despite the fact temperatures this afternoon will stay slightly below average. So we're just beginning to rebound. Look, there's a lot of times at you know, 9 a.m. we're in the mid-80s already this time of the year, but it's the low to mid-70s in most spots. So the rain is exiting Volusia and Brevard counties. That was the last gasp of rain this morning, but it is now off the coastline. We're still going to see a 60% chance for showers and storms redeveloping this afternoon, with daytime highs mainly in the upper 80s. A couple of spots that get the sunshine early and don't get the rain until later could still punch to 90 degrees. Friends, the five-day forecast, I don't expect the severe weather today like we had yesterday. That being said, still some stronger storms possible and a high-end chance of rain between now and Wednesday. I'll be tracking that for you and have the latest today at noon. Jamie? Remember, you can always get the latest weather and news at WFTV.com anytime during the day. We will see you for Eyewitness News at noon. Have a great day, everyone. Watch Channel 9 Eyewitness News on your Apple TV, Roku, or Amazon Fire TV. Central Florida's most watched news and weather. It's free on demand. Watch it live or on your own time. Download the Channel 9 app right now. Just search WFTV. Orlando Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram is bringing the heat during the summer clearance event. I'm Gary Bosses. Lease a brand new Jeep Wrangler or Cherokee Limited starting at just $199 a month. Two hot choices, $199 a month. Shop online or visit us at Orlando Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram on West Colonial Drive. That moment when Steve kept it real.
how big are your lips? You blind? That moment Josh went TMI. I got irritable bowel syndrome. And you thought wearing a light gray suit was a good <laughs> idea? That moment when Steve learned a new dance. Oh, I go down there. <laughs> well, ain't no up, though. Don't miss a moment on Family Feud. Tonight at 7 on TV 27. K92.3 is Orlando's number one for new country. Hi, this is Blake Shelton. This is Jason Aldean. This is Luke Bryan. The biggest stars. Your boys, Florida, Georgia Live. This is our home for country in Orlando. K92.3. The Village's biggest stories are live on Channel 9 Eyewitness News.
is Orlando. This is where we believe in magic and fantasies and wishing upon stars and the power of the imagination. This is where we believe in dreams and seeing them come true. This is Orlando, known around the world as the home of happiness and to those who live here happily as home. This is more than just a place to stay a while. It's a place to stay on the cutting edge. Here, innovation comes in every form, entertainment in every variety, and thriving businesses in every size. So if you think you know all there is to know about Orlando, prepare to be surprised. Because until you get to really know this place, this community, and see all the reasons why it's so magical, rest assured, you don't know the half of it.
and you watch Eyewitness News at 10. We're going to make it worth your while. It's not the news you already know. It's new local stories happening now. Investigations that give you better perspective from local neighborhoods. Inside sources reveal it's a major community problem that's been ignored for years. Weather conditions change every minute. That's why I'm constantly tracking your local forecast. I'm Martha Sigalski. And I'm George Estevez. Join us for Channel 9 Eyewitness News at 10 on TV 27. Learn life's greatest lessons on Seinfeld's Guide to Social Norms. This is normal. Avoid yelling or screaming with anger. One should never play with one's food. Don't be a slave to fashion. But sure. And never do this in polite company. Discover more social norms to follow on Seinfeld five times a week. This is an ideology I can embrace. Tonight at 6 on TV 27.
today. You have a decision to make. Will you choose to stand and protect this house, shaped by men who walked here before you? To forge a new legend, to build from blood and sweat that which cannot be bought. Today, you have a decision to make.
You have things to do, places to... Whoa, is that still good? Uh, no. That's why Channel 9 Eyewitness News is here for you. This isn't small talk on a couch. It's real news. From journalists with real experience. A weather forecast you can actually use. Storms are going to pop up right when the kids get out of school today. And a traffic expert who knows more than just I-4. FHP is working this crash, so I just worked out this alternate route to cut your drive time in half. Channel 9 Eyewitness News this morning. Weekdays at 5. Touchdown. Trust the team in Severe Weather Center 9 to give you weather coverage you can count on.
We know mornings are tough. You have things to do, places to... Whoa, is that still good? Uh, no. That's why Channel 9 Eyewitness News is here for you. This isn't small talk on a couch. It's real news from journalists with real experience. A weather forecast you can actually use. Storms are going to pop up right when the kids get out of school. And a traffic expert who knows more than just I-4. I just worked out this alternate route. Channel 9 Eyewitness News this morning, weekdays at 5. Soldiers in the Army National Guard live up to a set of time-honored principles. I will always first. They stand ready to respond to any crisis. I will never accept defeat. They serve in their communities as citizens and as soldiers. I will never quit. They train part-time to be ready to serve at all times. I will never leave a fallen comrade. Learn more at NationalGuard.com.
At Channel 9 Eyewitness News, we know you need more than just a five-day forecast. That's why we use the tools here in Severe Weather Center 9 to break down the science behind your weather. We take you beyond the numbers to focus on how weather impacts your life, giving you a first-hand perspective so you'll always have the full story. Every day, every newscast. Channel 9 Eyewitness News is weather coverage you can count on. Definitely gonna watch that. I'll be there for you. Loving this. Friends, weekdays at four on TV 27.
when Steve kept it real. How big are your lips? You blind? That moment Josh went TMI. I got irritable bowel syndrome. And you thought wearing a light gray suit was a good <laughs> idea? That moment when Steve learned a new dance. Oh, I go down there. Well, oh, ain't no up, though. Don't miss a moment on Family Feud. Tonight at 7 on TV 27. Learn life's greatest lessons on Seinfeld's Guide to Social Norms. This is normal. Avoid yelling or screaming with anger. Wow. One should never play with one's food. Don't be a slave to fashion. My shirt. And never do this in polite company. Discover more social norms to follow on Seinfeld five times a week. This is an ideology I can embrace. Weeknights at 6 on TV 27.
is at its worst. Count on the team in Severe Weather Center 9. Alerting you first when storms move in. Keeping you connected when it matters most. The tools you need to track weather where you live. With insight from Chief Meteorologist Tom Terry and the experts who know Central Florida. Any screen, anywhere, so you're informed when it matters most. Severe Weather Center 9. Coverage you can count on. What is icflorida.com? It gives us great insider information of what's going on locally. If I go to the IC Florida app, it's easy for me to see what's new and what's hot. If SD is there, you're yeah. there. And SD is everywhere. Having the food critic on here, Scott Joseph, definitely helps to see what's good, what's not. It makes you feel like you're part of this town, so why not? IC Florida, go local, go local. Go inside Central Florida with icflorida.com. Brought to you by Daytona Beach.
Selfless service is the principle that guides Army National Guard soldiers to be ready whenever disaster strikes. They have a stake in the well-being of the neighborhoods where they live and work. They train part-time to be ready to serve at all times. Selfless service. It's what inspires the men and women of the Army National Guard to be part of something greater than themselves. Visit NationalGuard.com to learn more. A flash flood warning is now in effect for Tallahassee, Florida. Keeping a NOAA radio in your home will alert you of any dangerous weather in the area. In the event of a flash flood, be prepared to evacuate to a safe location. Secure all important documents and belongings and avoid areas subject to flooding. Follow your pre-planned evacuation route and never drive through flooded roadways. Keep you and your family safe. Get a plan.
We know mornings are tough. You have things to do, places to go. Is that still good? Uh, no. That's why Channel 9 Eyewitness News is here for you. This isn't small talk on a couch. It's real news from journalists with real experience. A weather forecast you can actually use. Storms are going to pop up right when the kids get out of school. And a traffic expert who knows more than just I-4. I just worked out this alternate route. Channel 9 Eyewitness News this morning, weekdays at 5. For beach days or rain delays, when hurricanes hit home or tornadoes touch down, when experience really matters, no one knows your weather like Chief Meteorologist Tom Terry and the experts in Severe Weather Center 9. Tracking storms down to your street with earlier warnings so you have more time to prepare when you need it most. Trust the team in Severe Weather Center 9 to give you weather coverage you can count on.
on to your corruption. Government waste, your time is up. And all you scams and ripoffs out there, your days are numbered. Because Nine Investigates is coming after you. Every day, we're exposing the lies, loopholes, and con artists trying to cheat us all. Nine Investigates, only on Channel 9 Eyewitness News. It's coverage you can count on. That moment when Steve kept it real. How big are your lips? You blind? That moment Josh went TMI. I got irritable bowel syndrome. And you thought wearing a light gray suit was a good <laughs> idea? That moment when Steve learned a new dance. Oh, I go down there. <laughs> well, ain't no up, though. Don't miss a moment on Family Feud. Weeknights at 7 on TV 27.
Orlando. This is where we believe in magic and fantasies and wishing upon stars and the power of the imagination. This is where we dream, where we think smarter and play harder. So if you think you know all there is to know about Orlando, you're in for a big surprise. Because until you join our community and see all the reasons we're amazing, you don't know the half of it. At Channel 9 Eyewitness News, we know you need more than just a five-day forecast. That's why we use the tools here in Severe Weather Center 9 to break down the science behind your weather. We take you beyond the numbers to focus on how weather impacts your life, giving you a first-hand perspective so you'll always have the full story. Every day, every newscast. Channel 9 Eyewitness News is weather coverage you can count on.
Now you can get Channel 9 Eyewitness News updates on your Amazon Echo device. How cool is this? You ask a question, Alexa, what's in the news today? And it gives you an answer. Here's your flash briefing from WFTV in Orlando. Good morning, everyone. I'm Channel 9's Jamie Holmes. Today, the union's representing... To get news updates, open the Alexa app on your phone, search WFTV under Skills, then enable the flash briefing.
This is Orlando. This is where we believe in magic and fantasies and wishing upon stars and the power of the imagination. This is where we believe in dreams and seeing them come true. This is Orlando, known around the world as the home of happiness and to those who live here happily as home. This is more than just a place to stay a while. It's a place to stay on the cutting edge. Here, innovation comes in every form, entertainment in every variety, and thriving businesses in every size. So if you think you know all there is to know about Orlando, prepare to be surprised. Because until you get to really know this place, this community, and see all the reasons why it's so magical, rest assured, you don't know the half of it.
you watch Eyewitness News at 10. We're going to make it worth your while. It's not the news you already know. It's new local stories happening now. Investigations that give you better perspective from local neighborhoods. Inside sources reveal it's a major community problem that's been ignored for years. Weather conditions change every minute. That's why I'm constantly tracking your local forecast. I'm Martha Sigalski. And I'm George Estevez. Join us for Channel 9 Eyewitness News at 10 on TV 27. For the good times and the bad, for the happy and the sad. How about if I dance around all covered in sauce? The love, the laughter, the happily ever after. I'm definitely gonna watch that. I'll be there for you. Loving this. Friends, weekdays at four on TV 27.
have a decision to make. Will you choose to stand and protect this house, shaped by men who walked here before you? To forge a new legend, to build from blood and sweat that which cannot be bought. Today, you have a decision to make.
at its worst. Count on the team in Severe Weather Center 9. Alerting you first when storms move in. Keeping you connected when it matters most. The tools you need to track weather where you live. With insight from Chief Meteorologist Tom Terry and the experts who know Central Florida. Any screen, anywhere, so you're informed when it matters most. Severe Weather Center 9. Coverage you can count on. Learn life's greatest lessons on Seinfeld's Guide to Social Norms. This is normal. Avoid yelling or screaming with anger. One should never play with one's food. Don't be a slave to fashion. But sure. And never do this in polite company. Discover more social norms to follow on Seinfeld five times a week. This is an ideology I can embrace. Weeknights at 6 on TV 27.
Selfless service is the principle that guides Army National Guard soldiers to be ready whenever disaster strikes. They have a stake in the well-being of the neighborhoods where they live and work. They train part-time to be ready to serve at all times. Selfless service. It's what inspires the men and women of the Army National Guard to be part of something greater than themselves. Visit NationalGuard.com to learn more. We live in such a, a unique climate here in Central Florida, and we know that storms can turn severe in a moment's notice. Our million watt radar can keep you ahead of that storm. We can give you earlier warning when the storm happens. We could track these storms right down to street level, and we have all the tools here in Severe Weather Center 9 to keep you safe. It's more than just all the data. We have great data, but it comes down to, I think, the experience that we have. So no matter what does happen with that storm, we're going to be here for you. That's our promise. Eyewitness News at noon. Coverage you can count on. 
This afternoon, state troopers want your help to find the driver of a red vehicle who left the scene of a deadly hit and run in Brevard County. That accident left an Orlando man dead. Good afternoon. I'm Marty Salt. I'm Vanessa Eccles. It happened Saturday night along State Road 528. But this afternoon, investigators do have a few clues. As Channel 9's Angela Jacobs reports, analysts are reviewing data surrounding a specialty license plate that investigators hope will help identify the car. Troopers say the red vehicle they're looking for has front end damage and a hammock hippie sticker on the back. There's also a unique tag, and right now analysts here at FHP are compiling a list of everyone who bought an endless summer specialty license plate. The search continues for one of the parties involved in this aftermath along State Road 528 Saturday night. Troopers say 58-year-old Jeffrey Brookshire was killed, and his 26-year-old female passenger Shannon Fisher left in critical condition when another car hit them from behind. Troopers say the crash happened near exit 49 just before 7:30. Witnesses report a blue Mustang and a red passenger vehicle were traveling in the eastbound lanes when they became involved in some type of road rage exchange. It looked like. The um, blue Mustang got in front of him and put on his brakes or something. And then it looked like the red car was slamming on his brakes, too. They've been doing that all the way. Investigators said the red vehicle then struck the rear of the Mustang, sending it across the grass median and into the westbound path of an SUV. This is an example of the Florida-issued specialty license plate witnesses noted was on that red suspect vehicle. FHP asks anyone who has seen it to call Crime Line. Troopers say that red suspect vehicle could resemble a Dodge Charger, but they are still working to confirm that description due to variations in accounts from witnesses. Reporting in Orlando, Angela Jacobs, Channel 9, Eyewitness News. New at noon, dozens of people are expected to gather at Orlando City Hall to support a policy change to protect undocumented immigrants from being profiled. The City Council is expected to pass the Trust Act policy during this afternoon's meeting. Channel 9's Sarah Putman is live at City Hall where supporters of the act say it's a move toward helping make Orlando safer and more inclusive. That's right, and within the next 30 minutes, the mayor as well as several other groups are planning to meet here right in front of City Hall. They believe by expanding this policy, it will make immigrant communities feel more included in the community, but it will also encourage undocumented immigrants to report crimes. Now, this is a policy that's already in place for the Orlando Police Department. It prevents officers from detaining or questioning a victim about their immigration status. Now that rule will apply to all city workers. The policy states city workers cannot deny city services based on a person's ability to speak English or their immigration status. So city benefits will be awarded to all unless the state or federal law prevents it. So there's so many components to this that are going to help reassure not just the immigrant communities, but I think as a city, feeling unified, feeling that this is a welcome, welcoming city. So that's going to send a large and clear message to all residents in our city of Orlando. Now, supporters are clear that the policy is inclusive, but it will not make the city of Orlando a sanctuary city. However, it will help some undocumented citizens um, immigrants find a path towards citizenship. We're going to tackle that part of the story for our later shows. Reporting live in Orlando, Sierra Putman, Channel 9, Eyewitness News. The morning got off to a soggy start and more rain and storms are on the way for this afternoon. Certified meteorologist Rusty McCraney is tracking the latest from Severe Weather Center 9. Getting prepared, Rusty. Yeah, we are, Marty. Boy, we had some really healthy storms, obviously, yesterday through the overnight hours. Had some rain this morning. That has cleared out. We're dry across the area at the hour, but I fully expect additional showers and storms to develop again. Live look outside. This is downtown Orlando looking up to the north and to the east. Now that the sun has come back out, it's a steam bath outside. It's 86 degrees right now. It's a strong southwest breeze as well. Good 10 to 15 miles an hour with some higher gusts in most spots. Temperatures range anywhere from 81 in Ocala to 89 in Melbourne. Again, told you during the morning show, some spots would hit 90. Most of us would be just below that. Kissimmee is in at 90 degrees. Winds are going to be out of the south to southwest for today and a little bit breezy from time to time. That's even before the showers and storms redevelop a good 10 to 15 miles an hour. So again, we have some clouds built 
building back in the sunshine from I-4 off towards the coast. Thicker clouds in our western areas. We do have a little bit of storm activity right now in portions of Hernando and Pasco counties west of I-75 from Brooksville down towards the Spring Hill area. If you know that area west and south of Sumter County, this is all going to be moving off towards the east. So I'll track that. That could get into southern Sumter uh, before our noon show is done. Now, the good news is no part of central Florida is under a risk for severe storms for today. It doesn't mean a rogue storm could develop and be on the strong to isolated severe side. It just means overall, I don't expect the intensity of the storms to be as strong compared to yesterday. That being said, we'll still have some gusty winds, some heavier rainfall, and a lot of lightning. Coming up in a couple of minutes, we'll look at those storm threats. How much more rain I expect out of the storms today and just how long this wet pattern is going to be sticking around. Marty. All right, Rusty, storms in other parts of the United States are causing some flight delays and cancellations here. At least a dozen flights were canceled at Orlando International Airport this morning. Some passengers say the delays were so bad they were stuck waiting in the airport for more than 12 hours. We had a 7 o'clock flight on Delta that got pushed, you know, from 8 to 10 to 11 to 12. Finally, at 2.30, we've got families waiting to get on a plane, and they announced no, the flight's going to get in now at 1045. Wow. Most of the canceled flights are with JetBlue and Southwest. We've made it easy, though. We put a link to the departures board on our website. Just head to WFTV.com slash weblinks. This week, Sumter County investigators are trying to identify human remains found in a Bushnell backyard. And they say it's the backyard of a man who has been missing for a month. Deputies say Claudio Cavajal Hernandez disappeared in mid-June. On Thursday, they discovered burned human remains in his backyard. Investigators have not been able to identify the remains, and they say it could take some time. In Orlando, families preparing for a funeral after one of their family members was gunned down last week in Pine Hills. The 21-year-old pregnant woman was killed while in a car with her boyfriend and children a week ago today. As Channel 9's Sarah Beth Ackerman reports, investigators say they are still searching for her killers. A heartbroken family now planning a funeral. I mean, we're desperate for answers. Still no closer to getting the closure they desperately hoped to get after 21-year-old Imelda Francois was gunned down in Pine Hills while in the car with her boyfriend and children. For those who knew her, called her Tia. And her cousin says she was in a good place in her life, six and a half months pregnant. She was having a baby girl due November 2nd. Two others were shot in the car, a 13-year-old and Tia's 22-month-old son. We're told both children are expected to be okay. The 22-month-old will soon have surgery to remove a bullet still inside him. We know he misses her because he'll, you know, sing little songs and stuff and call out his you know, call out her name. So. Right now, the focus is still on finding whoever shot at the family. We're told investigators are searching for two men last seen driving an older model white sedan. Sarah Beth Ackerman, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. At this point, investigators say they still don't know why someone would open fire on the family driving in Pine Hills. The family says if anyone saw anything, please come forward. A Lake County bus driver is facing 32 counts of child abuse against special needs children and was arraigned in court this morning. Detectives say James Charles Brunson physically abused four special needs children between the ages of 7 and 9 on bus routes to and from Sorrento Elementary School. Investigators say school bus surveillance video shows Brunson grabbing the children by their faces, pulling and twisting their arms and pushing them against the wall of the school bus. The trial of a man accused of killing his teenage cousin is now underway. Investigators say Mike Goo shot and killed 17-year-old Joshua Hagens outside an Orange County home in January of last year. Deputies say he barricaded himself in an Apopka house for hours until a SWAT team used tear gas and found Goo hiding in the attic. He is now charged with first-degree murder. Also starting today, the trial for Manuel Feliciano. He's accused of killing his former girlfriend in front of her two children. Deputies say they later found Feliciano hiding out in a home off Annadale Street where they say he shot at them from outside. Feliciano is facing charges of first degree murder and attempted murder of a law enforcement officer. State troopers are investigating a deadly crash that happened on Colonial Drive this morning. Officials say this white pickup was trying to make a left turn from the 417 exit ramp onto Colonial Drive when he struck and killed a motorcyclist. Troopers say the truck driver had a red flashing light, which means the driver should treat the intersection like there's a stop sign. The motorcyclist had a yellow flashing light, which means 
proceed with caution. The duck boat that capsized and sank in Missouri, killing 17 people, is being brought to the surface this afternoon. That boat went down Thursday night near Branson after a thunderstorm generated near hurricane strength wind. ABC's Marcus Moore is following today's developments. We have been following that tragedy on the water that happened last week. 17 people killed when a duck boat capsized. It happened here on the water at this uh, lake where we are getting new information about what investigators have learned about the accident. We know that the boat sank to the bottom of the lake and they have been able to recover the data recorder. And the reason why that's significant is because investigators hope that it will uh, give them critical clues as they try to determine if the, the captain, the crew, or the company made any mistakes when this was unfolding. Um, we've also heard from the attorney general that this boat had four to five cameras. And, and that could reveal a lot about what was done as this was happening, but it's unclear if those cameras uh, have audio. As you know, we have heard a harrowing story from one of the survivors, Tia Coleman, who sadly lost her three young children, her husband, and five relatives. They all died, uh, nine members of the same family uh, passing away. And she says that the, ca the boat's captain described where the life vests were on the boat, but that he told the group they, quote, would not need those life vests. And as you know, 31 people were on board that boat that battled near hurricane force winds and also six foot swells before sinking to the bottom of the lake. I'm Marcus Moore in Branson, Missouri. A Florida man was shot and killed all over a parking space. He runs in where my five-year-old son was. He collapsed in front of my son and within 30 minutes he was gone. Why charges in the case will never be filed. And no more taking out your electronics and liquids at airport security. Why it soon may be a thing of the past. And how a new SunRail schedule is supposed to help improve the Central Florida commute. Right now, no rain across Central Florida, but that's going to change in a hurry with more showers and storms redeveloping this afternoon. I'm tracking those for you in a wet evening ahead on the other side of the break. Now you can get Channel 9 Eyewitness News updates on your Amazon Echo device. How cool is this? You ask a question, Alexa, what's in the news today? And it gives you an answer. Here's your flash briefing from WFTV in Orlando. Good morning, everyone. I'm Channel 9's Jamie Holmes. Today, the union's representing... To get news updates, open the Alexa app on your phone, search WFTV under Skills, then enable the flash briefing. Save money, save time with easy checking from McCoy Federal. Get access to your account 24-7, online and on our mobile app. Plus, there's no minimum balance fee or monthly service fee. Make the easy choice with easy checking. Apply now at McCoyFCU.org. Selfless service is the principle that guides Army National Guard soldiers to be ready whenever disaster strikes. They have a stake in the well-being of the neighborhoods where they live and work. They train part-time to be ready to serve at all times. Selfless service. It's what inspires the men and women of the Army National Guard to be part of something greater than themselves. Visit NationalGuard.com to learn more. Save money, save time with easy checking from McCoy Federal. Get access to your account 24-7, online and on our mobile app. Plus, there's no minimum balance fee or monthly service fee. Make the easy choice with easy checking. Apply now at McCoyFCU.org. There's a new SunRail schedule in effect ahead of the opening of the new stations in Orange and Osceola counties. The new schedule has more midday stops and trains will now run later at night. Channel 9's Ty Russell talked to people looking forward to the expansion. Starting next week, this SunRail train horn will be heard at four new stations. There's Meadow Woods in Orange County, then there's Tupperware, downtown Kissimmee, and Poinciana in Osceola County. Oh, I think that's a great idea. It would give people more adventure. The 3,500 riders on average each day started on the new schedule this morning. Trains even began traveling on the new 17-mile track, even though passengers won't be allowed to stay on the trains as they make stops at the four new stations. When it comes to existing stops, the first northbound train starts at 6.10 in the morning at the Sand Lake Road Station, and the last is in DeBerry at 11.23 p.m. 
on the southbound side. The first train is at 5.06 in the morning in Sanford to 9.13 at night at the Sand Lake Road Station. With the new expansion and times, one rider wants Sunrail to consider her proposal. Great thoughts. I just wish they could do other areas. Could go from east to west. Police in Miami Beach say at least one person is hurt after a building collapsed this morning. The building was scheduled to be demolished and had a permit for the demolition, but police said the building was not authorized to be imploded. Miami Beach fire officials initially said there were several injuries, but police say they can only confirm one. No word yet on that person's condition. Three people, including the gunman, are dead after shooting in Toronto, Canada. Police say the gunman shot 14 people in Toronto's Greektown neighborhood. ABC's Maggie Ruley has more. Just as family and friends are sitting down to dinner on Sunday night. There's multiple victims and the suspect that's fleeing uh, looks like possibly still shooting. A gunman fires off round after round. I would say I heard at least 20 shots. Straight into a crowded Toronto neighborhood. Shocking. Absolutely shocking. I mean, this is a street where people walk every day to go do their groceries, to have dinner, to have an ice cream, sit in a square, enjoy their summer. Police arrive on scene and fire back. In the shootout, the suspect is killed, but not before more than a dozen people are shot. Police say they're still searching for a motive and have not yet ruled out terrorism. I'm keeping everything open. I'm looking at absolutely every single possible motive. I'm not closing any doors or any chapters on this. As investigators search for answers, Parliament in Ontario held a moment of silence for the victims. Ask the House now to rise to observe a moment of silence. While lawmakers in Toronto are already calling for action. I've said for some time that the city has a gun problem in that guns are far too readily available to far too many people. It was a gun-related shooting. I think it's time to step up again. Canada's Prime Minister responded on Twitter saying his thoughts are with everyone affected by this terrible tragedy and he's promising his support through this difficult time. Maggie Rooley, ABC News, New York. SpaceX is getting ready to send another satellite into space. They say the Falcon 9 rocket static fire test was successful and it's set to launch on Wednesday. The rocket will carry the Iridium 7 satellite into space and will launch from the Vandenberg Air Force Base in California. The Falcon 9 rocket's Block 5 booster is making its way back to Earth after a successful launch early yesterday morning. SpaceX launched the Telstar 19, a Canadian communications satellite, into orbit just before 2 a.m. yesterday. The satellite is the heavy commercial communications satellite ever to be launched. You still have a chance to become a mega millionaire. There were no winners in Friday's Mega Millions drawing, so the jackpot for tomorrow's drawing has topped $493 million. Lottery officials say it's possible the price can go even higher based on ticket sales. The jackpot will be the fifth largest in Mega Millions history. Now, if there's a single winner and that person chooses the cash payout, that person will take home about $296 million. 296. You might be able That's to do all. something with that. Mm -hmm. Why right. can't one of us win that already? Come I know. on, let's go. I don't know. Yeah. Let's get it I done. Know. But boy, what a Ooh. downpour. That was unbelievable. It's pretty rare to have as widespread severe weather as we did yesterday in July yeah. in central Florida. But we had some rowdy storms. We had sure more did. rain overnight and additional showers and storms will get going this afternoon. More garden variety, though. This is going to be a little bit more typical July afternoon compared to yesterday. We'll talk about the severe weather threat coming up right now. That's early warning Doppler 9. Again, the rain is just off to our west and it'll be moving in as we get through the remainder of our afternoon hours with additional showers and storms cropping up. Best part of the day for the beaches will be between about now and mid-afternoon. We are dry and we're heating up again. We're getting rid of some of the clouds that we've had. 84 degrees right now in Daytona Beach with a southwest wind right around 10 miles an hour for us here. And that sunset this evening is going to be at 822. Okay, temperatures on the board right now. Again, heating up some spots near 90 degrees. I think it's about as high as we'll get. You know, 91 is not out of the question, but OA, OA at 86, Sanford 87. Then you got some lower 80s with some thicker clouds already back into our western zones, including Ocala at 81. Pretty fresh breeze outside right now. That's that southwest wind. It's cranking in the heat and the humidity. I told you this morning that once the sun broke back out because of the rain this morning, well, it was going to be so humid outside. And that's what we're feeling. Despite the fact we're not 92, 93 degrees right now, even the mid-80s feel somewhat uncomfortable at the hour. So, again, the clouds beginning to thicken back up in our western areas. Still kind of a mix of sun and clouds from I-4 
off to the east, and there is one cluster of thunderstorms that have moved back inland. They're still west of Sumter County into Pasco and Hernando counties, but this will be marching closer towards southern Sumter and then the southwest sides of Lake County near Bay Lake, uh, perhaps getting there even before the end of the hour. But the bottom line is, even ahead of that, I expect more storms to develop. So even by the end of the show, we could get a thunderstorm or two trying to develop in Orange County, especially into Polk and into portions of Sumter and Lake County. And then look how everything blossoms. It really looks like the best chance for storms will be the mid-afternoon hours for today. Once again, the movement is west to east. These will be more typical storms that you would expect. Some gusty winds, a lot of rain and lightning, but not the intensity, especially with the winds and the hail threat that we had out of yesterday's storms. They'll then move off to the coast. Can't rule out a redeveloping shower or storm in the early evening hours. Again, not completely dry as we head towards sunset, but just more isolated in nature. Again, officially from the Storm Prediction Center, we are under no risk for severe weather for today. Officially, can't rule out a rogue severe storm, but generally you're looking at stronger storms below severe weather criteria. That threat is to our south for today. Lighting's always a big risk this time of the year. We could still see some areas with one to two inches of rain. And we'll talk a lot more about the rain we've seen over the last 24 hours coming up in the next half hour. But the bottom line is some areas have had more than five inches of rain already. So we can get up to a half foot in a couple of spots before it's all said and done. Again, winds of 40 miles an hour is absolutely possible as well. Highs for today will mainly be in the mid in the upper 80s. It's very area dependent. Now, these are going to be your 3 p.m. temperatures, so rain cooled. Kissimmee is in at 90, but our expect our temperature drop back down to the mid 80s there. And again, mainly the mid and the upper 80s across Orange County, then Sanford 87, Altamont 85, will be in the mid 80s in Volusia County as well. Friends of the five day forecast, it's a pretty active weather pattern between now and Wednesday. Maybe it's not much overnight rain, more of a traditional afternoon storms, both Tuesday and Wednesday, but still, it's a pretty healthy chance at a 60% chance, so keep that in mind if you have outdoor plans. The kids still running around summer camp time this time of the year. It'll be a little bit drier Thursday and Friday. It's a 40% chance of storms then, but it gets hot. The highs returning to the low and possibly even the mid-90s. Vanessa. Orlando City officials took feedback for a whole year about how to improve one of the city's busiest roads. What a 145-page report will mean for Corinne Drive. And why an Uber and Lyft driver who was live streaming his passengers without them even knowing it won't face any legal action. Plus how a version of medical marijuana has made its way into your cosmetics. For beach days or rain delays, when hurricanes hit home, or tornadoes touch down. When experience really matters, no one knows your weather like Chief Meteorologist Tom Terry and the experts in Severe Weather Center 9. Tracking storms down to your street with earlier warnings so you have more time to prepare when you need it most. Trust the team in Severe Weather Center 9 to give you weather coverage you can count on. <laughs> Give me 10 minutes. We know mornings are tough. You have things to do, places to... Whoa, is that still good? Uh, no. That's why Channel 9 Eyewitness News is here for you. This isn't small talk on a couch. It's real news from journalists with real experience. A weather forecast you can actually use. Storms are going to pop up right when the kids get out of school. And a traffic expert who knows more than just I-4. I just worked out this alternate route. Channel 9 Eyewitness News this morning, weekdays at 5. We're on to you, corruption. Government waste, your time is up. And all you scams and ripoffs out there, your days are numbered. Because Nine Investigates is coming after you. Every day, we're exposing the lies, loopholes, and con artists trying to cheat us all. Nine Investigates, only on Channel 9 Eyewitness News. It's coverage you can count on. Soldiers in the Army National Guard live up to a set of time-honored principles. They stand ready to respond to any crisis. They serve in their communities as citizens and as soldiers. They train part-time to be ready to serve at all times. Learn more at NationalGuard.com. What is icflorida.com? It gives us great insider information of what's going on locally. If I go to the IC Florida app, it's easy for me to see what's new and what's hot. If SD is there, 
We are there. And SD is everywhere. Having the food critic on here, Scott Joseph, definitely helps to see what's good, what's not. It makes you feel like you're part of this town, so why not? I see Florida. Go look or go fun. Go inside Central Florida with icflorida.com. Brought to you by Daytona Beach. Early warning Doppler 9 radar every day on Channel 9 Eyewitness News. While the medical marijuana industry expands across the country, more states sanction its use. You might be surprised to learn all of the places that non-THC products can now be found in the cosmetics injury industry. That's right, cosmetics. Channel 9's Angela Jacobs looked into how it may have made its way into your makeup. Ooh, it's really light. Allergy sufferer Autumn Williams was impressed after trying a new vegan mascara on her sensitive eyes. It's separating my eyelashes really well. They already look like twice as thick as they did before, and they don't feel heavy, and that's like the most important thing I, I know for me and most women. She had no idea it's infused with cannabidiol oil, also known as CBD, an extract used in various forms of medical marijuana. I've never heard of that. I've never even heard of vegan mascara. We found the use of CBD and hemp oils spreading across the beauty industry, popping up in serums, moisturizers, and makeup to nail polish and cologne. We counted dozens of products carried by major retailers and an array of promises, all based on CBD's antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties that advocates say can smooth wrinkles, thicken lashes, improve skin, and even your mood. That's what we all want, you know? We all want to look younger and feel better. Dr. Gregory Simano with Simano Aesthetics in Winter Park isn't surprised by the plant-based explosion and only expects it to grow. You know, these topical solutions, they're not going to make you high or anything like that. They don't have the psychoactive components in them. But I don't think it's the panacea that it's being sort of pushed as, but I do think we're going to see improvements and, and um, benefits from it. Right now, Simano says data is scarce in defining those benefits. As long as the cannabis plant is considered a Schedule One drug on a federal level, studies in the U.S. are limited. Another drawback, similar to the vitamin and supplement industries, is a lack of regulation. So you can't always know how much of what's promised to be in there is in there. I'm a fan, I think. <laughs> we'll see. While Samato joins other physicians who aren't yet ready to endorse the ingredient, he's optimistic as its future unfolds. I'm excited about it. I mean, I think, I think it's, I think it's going to show a lot of promise as, as time goes on. Angela Jacobs, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. Dr. Simano advises buyers to stick to products sold by major retailers who back the safety and the quality of their merchandise. President Trump threatened Iran today in a tweet what he says the U.S. will not tolerate. This tower cam shot is driven by Toyota of Orlando and Toyota of Claremont. A flash flood warning is now in effect for Tallahassee, Florida. Keeping a NOAA radio in your home will alert you of any dangerous weather in the area. In the event of a flash flood, be prepared to evacuate to a safe location. Secure all important documents and belongings and avoid areas subject to flooding. Follow your pre-planned evacuation route and never drive through flooded roadways. Keep you and your family safe. Get a plan. You've heard the ads. Injured on the job or hurt in an accident? There are plenty of lawyers looking to represent the injured. But what if it's your fault? Who's going to represent you? You have to pick your insurance agent before you know how bad the accident is going to be. Come see us today for a no-obligation coverage review and find out if your policy gives you the protection you need when you need it the most. Hugh Cotton Insurance, sharing businesses and families since 1948. Power 95.3. Orlando's new number one overall hit. Bad things. It's a lot of bad things. Power 95.3. Commercial free at 11:30, 4:30, and 8:30. Power 95.3. Now you can get Channel 9 Eyewitness News updates on your Amazon Echo device. How cool is this? You ask a question, Alexa, what's in the news today? And it gives you an answer. Here's your flash briefing from WFTV in Orlando. Good morning, everyone. I'm Channel 9's Jamie Holmes. Today, the union's representing... To get news updates, open the Alexa app on your phone, search WFTV under Skills, 
then enable the flash briefing. When weather is at its worst, count on the team in Severe Weather Center 9. Alerting you first when storms move in. Keeping you connected when it matters most. The tools you need to track weather where you live. With insight from Chief Meteorologist Tom Terry and the experts who know Central Florida. Any screen, anywhere, so you're informed when it matters most. Severe Weather Center 9. Coverage you can count on. Days at 4 on TV 27. People are gathering at Orlando City Hall now to support a policy change to protect undocumented immigrants. This is a live look from City Hall. This afternoon, the City Council is expected to pass the Trust Act policy. City leaders say they believe the change will encourage undocumented immigrants to report crimes without fear of being detained. Here's a live look now at downtown Orlando on this Monday as we track a chance for afternoon showers. Certified meteorologist Rusty McCraney has the latest now from Severe Weather Center 9. Could be some heavy storms out there this afternoon. Yeah, again, a little on the rotting nature of Vanessa. I don't expect them to be as strong compared to yesterday, but still, you know, this time of the year, friends, we can get some very heavy rainfall and some gusty winds. Temperatures are beginning to rebound out. The sun is uh, back out, upper 80s, even hit 90 right now in Kissimmee, 87 in Wetter Haven and Leesburg, 86 in the land, 84 up in Palm Coast. We'll stay with a relatively breezy uh, south to southwest wind for today. 10 to 15 miles an hour with some gustier uh, spots, no doubt about it, especially in and around the storms. that get going. Now, in early warning Doppler 9, there's not much rain out there right now. We talked about this storm in Pasco, Hernando County. It's trying to march its way off towards the east. Also, some development ahead of that main line. So now we're getting a little bit of rain into far southern Sumter County, South Bushnell, Center Hill there. Very, uh, uh, you know, rural areas towards the Mabel area there in State Road 50. Keep an eye on that when that storm is just getting going. Now, these are 24-hour rainfall totals estimated here. We'll just pick a couple of spots. You can see anywhere you get the yellows, you're going to get over four inches of rain in those spots. And that's relatively widespread. Again, this would be just from this time yesterday. And in and around the metro, we're pinging some good two-and-a-half, three-inch-plus rainfall totals. Again, these are all estimates. There are spots that have even more than that. Marion County, some areas near the Ocala National Forest have had had more than five inches of rain in just the past 24 hours. Again, overall, the risk of severe storms is much lower today. That risk box from the Storm Prediction Center is actually south of all of the viewing area, but still, some isolated stronger storms are possible. I have much more on that and how long this active pattern is going to be sticking around. Vanessa? Officials in Titusville say the weather was the reason a sailboat capsized yesterday afternoon, forcing nearly a dozen people into the water. Fire officials say the boat took on water near the A Max Brewer Bridge just before 3 o'clock yesterday. They arrived to find some people in the water and others who had made it to the nearby island. Fire officials say the boat was taking people back from the island when the rain hit. Nine adults and two children were rescued. Nobody was hurt. Rescuers say the children did not have life vests, did rather have life vests on. People in Clearwater protested the controversial Florida Stand Your Ground law after a man was shot and killed in front of his five-year-old son. Deputies decided Michael Dreika is protected after he was seen on surveillance video shooting Marquise McLaughlin in the chest. As ABC's Gio Benitez reports, the confrontation started as an argument over a handicapped parking space. You're looking at surveillance video of a fight over a parking space that ended with an unarmed 28-year-old father of three killed. Florida police not charging the gunman, calling it an example of the state's contentious so-called stand-your-ground law. I just want justice. I, I need something to be done because this, this is not right. Brittany Jacobs was sitting in her boyfriend's idling car when, she says, 47-year-old Michael Dredgka approached to tell her that she illegally parked in a handicapped spot. Her boyfriend, 28-year-old Marquise McLaughlin, had gone into the store to buy snacks for the kids. You can see McLaughlin walk out of the store. He sees and hears the argument, runs over, and pushes Dredgka to the ground. He's, you know, pushing this man away from his girl, you know, telling him to get away. But that's when the irreversible happens. Dredgka takes out a gun and shoots McLaughlin. McLaughlin, holding his chest, runs back into the store. Jacobs and the children watching from the car. He collapsed in front of my son, and within 30 minutes, he was gone. 
McLaughlin was taken to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. There are reports that Dredgka, the shooter, has been known to have angry encounters over parking. Out oh, here he said he'll shoot me. The store owner says he's even had to call the cops on him for confronting other customers over parking. For a parking lot? For a stupid reason? Just to argue? Just to find someone to argue with? But police say this shooting was self-defense. He was a good man and all he was trying to do was just protect his family. President Trump is exchanging harsh threats with the president of Iran. The president responding to comments the Iranian president said on Twitter late last night in all caps, quote, never ever threaten the United States again or else you will suffer consequences. Reporter Christian Wright has more from Capitol Hill. National Security Advisor John Bolton put out an aggressive statement after President Trump and Iran's President Hassan Rouhani exchanged threatening comments. Bolton says President Trump told him that if Iran does anything at all, quote, to the negative, they will pay a price like few countries have paid before. The U.S. is reacting to remarks Rouhani made over the weekend. He said America must understand well that peace with Iran is the mother of all peace and war with Iran is the mother of all wars. To that, President Trump tweeted, never ever threaten the United States again or you will suffer consequences, the like of which few throughout history have ever suffered before. A few months ago, President Trump pulled out of the Iranian nuclear deal, an international agreement to keep Tehran from developing nuclear weapons. The U.S. also imposed new sanctions. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo was critical of the Iranian government in a speech yesterday. The level of corruption and wealth among Iranian leaders shows that Iran is run by something that resembles the mafia more than a government. Iran's state-owned news agency is calling President Trump's tweet a passive reaction. Reporting in Washington, Kristen Wright, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. A Brevard County man convicted of DUI manslaughter will learn his fate tomorrow. A jury found Cody Michael Gates guilty of driving drunk when his truck slammed into a building in Coco two years ago. His passenger and best friend, Dara Millilot, died. Police determined that Gates' blood alcohol was nearly three times over the legal limit. They also say he was driving about 120 miles per hour. He could face up to 15 years in prison. One father believes his invention will save young lives. How he says his drone device will keep kids from drowning in swimming pools. And the brands of rich crackers you are being encouraged not to eat. We know mornings are tough. You have things to do, places to go. Is that still good? That's why Channel 9 Eyewitness News is here for you. This isn't small talk on a couch. It's real news from journalists with real experience. A weather forecast you can actually use. Storms are going to pop up right when the kids get out of school. And a traffic expert who knows more than just I-4. I just worked out this alternate route. Channel 9 Eyewitness News this morning, weekdays at 5. It was a Sunday afternoon, and I was taking a drive in the villages when I was T-boned by a careless driver. I knew my girlfriend was going to need an attorney. We got together some friends, and they all told us to get attorney Dan Newland. And I'm so glad that we did. I was very satisfied with the way that Dan and his staff handled my case. In the end, I was awarded $300,000, and that money has helped us a lot. Involved in a car accident? Call me now at 407-888-8000. If we ever need an attorney again, we will definitely call Dan Newland. Charlie, what's going on out here, man? I'm blowing the whistle, Glenn. Nobody's drowning in high payments on my watch. That's right. Daytona Hyundai is throwing you a life preserver from your high payments. Right now at Daytona Hyundai, you have the freedom to choose between the 2018 Elantra GT, Sonata, Kona, or Tucson. All starting at just $159 a month with America's best warranty. Folks, Daytona Hyundai is keeping you afloat. Treating you better, saving From living room remodels to expansive family-sized kitchens, breathtaking baths, and fun-filled theater rooms, at s w Kitchens, we make sure every detail is designed with you in mind. Let our experts design your dream home today. Fall in love with your home again with s w Kitchens. Get started today with a free designer consultation. Call or visit snwkitchens.com. 
When severe weather happens, you can get alerts on your phone from your location on the Channel 9 Weather app. Plus, get live radar anytime and hour-by-hour -hour forecasts. Download the Channel 9 Weather app. It's available right now in the App Store and on Google Play. Just search WFTV. Hi, I'm Esty with IC Florida. Esty definitely helps me find the hidden gems around Orlando. This is the other hidden gem in Central Florida. Do you know about it? Esty makes people very excited. <laughs> if Esty is there, we are there. ICFlorida.com. Go local. Go fun. The makers of Ritz Cracker Sandwiches are recalling more than a dozen of their products because they could be contaminated with salmonella. The company says 16 varieties of Ritz Crackers and Ritz Bite contain a whey powder that's been recalled due to salmonella concerns. They say there haven't been any reported illnesses and the recall is just a precaution. You can find a complete list of the recall products at WFTV.com slash weblinks. A father in Phoenix is hoping to lower the number of children who drown in swimming pools. Lee Camber invented this drone device that acts like a second set of eyes in the pool. It floats on the water and has two 360 cameras, one on the top, one on the bottom. Camber says motion detectors will send a notification to your phone when someone approaches the pool and will warn you if someone could be in danger. Say you missed that notification and Lena jumps in the pool, then you get a second notification from the bottom camera that's showing your life image with inside the pool of your kid uh, dealing with crisis. Fire officials say although the camera could be helpful in dangerous situations, nothing can substitute for constantly supervising your child. A move by an Uber and Lyft driver is raising concerns about privacy. What he did to unsuspecting passengers that led to his suspension. We know how people feel about proposed design changes and safety solutions along Corinne Drive, but will anything come after this 145-page report? Well, here you go, friends. The first signs of showers and storms redeveloping across Central Florida. Early warning Doppler 9 from Avito towards the Heathrow Sanford areas. We're getting a couple bubbling up. I'll track those for you and more on the way on the other side of the break. Soldiers in the Army National Guard live up to a set of time-honored principles. They stand ready to respond to any crisis. They serve in their communities as citizens and as soldiers. They train part-time to be ready to serve at all times. Learn more at NationalGuard.com. The Central Florida Auto Dealers Association has been making an impact in Central Florida since 1929. Together with our members, we increase awareness of automotive careers and educational programs. To learn more, visit us at CFADA.org. Ooh, friendly, reliable, accessible, never overbearing, and knowledgeable. Oh. Hi, we're Frank. Welcome to Sun State Ford. I think I'm in the right place. Shop with Frank during our summer sales event. Drive this 2018 Focus SE for just $169 per month or 0% financing for 60 months or receive up to $4,000 cash back. Come find your match only at Sun State Ford. I'm Todd Miner. I get calls all the time from people who've settled their injury case using another attorney only to find out later that their settlement wasn't enough to cover all of their medical bills and expenses. As a former attorney for the largest auto insurance company in the country, I'll bring everything I learned on their side to your side and provide you with a free, honest, and accurate evaluation of your case. So call me today or visit ToddMinerLaw.com. Def Leppard is Classic Hits. Journey is Classic Hits. Aerosmith is Classic Hits. Orlando's Classic Hits are always on the new 98.9 WMMO. We are following breaking news right now in Orange County. Deputies say they've arrested two men on murder charges in a wild car chase and shootout. Last week's shooting ended on Alafaya Trail when a Jeep involved lost control and crashed into two other cars. Now, the driver of the Jeep, Jonathan Bryant, died after he was shot. In the last few minutes, investigators said Andreas Lee and Maurice Smith were arrested in the case. We're still asking deputies what the motive is behind this. We'll bring you more updates on Eyewitness News at 4. 
After a year of studying and community feedback, it's still not clear what direction planners will take to improve one of the Orlando area's busiest roads. Metro Plan released its report showing how people feel about proposed design changes and safety solutions along Corinne Drive. General Lines Lynn Keyes went through that 145 page report. Along busy Corinne Drive. Kimberly Hellstrom found the perfect spot to sell everything vintage in Audubon Park's Garden District. An amazing, thriving area that people want to come and travel to. And it's only fitting we spotted this Operation Safety game from the 1960s on the shelf as it's the current focus for the road right outside her shop. As we grow as a community, so does our traffic. Metro Plan just released this feedback report for Corinne Drive based on responses from more than 1,100 people who live, work, or drive the area. Hellstrom says changes are necessary because of speed and crashes. The traffic right now is so fast that creates danger. Although hundreds gave feedback, planners found people want change, but there is no clear consensus on how that change should look. Several design concepts were presented with variations on three lane, five lane, and hybrid options. No design was a clear favorite, but of the 779 people who voted, the five lane variation design came in at the top of the list. The report did find a huge percentage in favor of safety solutions like adjusting the timing on traffic lights. And 20% were for better access for pedestrians and bikes. For Hellstrom, it's about finding the right balance for the two-mile stretch between Mills and Bennett. Just calm. A little bit calmer. Link Keys, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. Metro Plan will now work with the city of Orlando, Winter Park, and Orange County to try and come up with a final concept. A St. Louis Uber and Lyft driver who was live streaming his passengers without them even knowing it is forcing ride sharing companies now to address privacy concerns. These are videos live streamed by Jason Gargick. He's since taken them down and no longer works for Uber or Lyft, but isn't facing any legal action. In the state of Missouri, as long as one party, and in this case it's the Uber driver, gives consent to the recording, it's not deemed illegal. While that may be true in Missouri and Florida, it is illegal to record a video or audio without all parties' consent. The TSA is rolling out new technology that can speed up security lines at the airport. They say taking out your electronics and liquids could soon be a thing of the past. Travelers going through the American Airlines terminal at JFK in New York will put their carry-on luggage through the brand new analogic 3D CT scanners. They can detect a wider range of explosives and smaller ones as well, meaning you won't have to take things out of your bag. The TSA says it plans to have more than 250 of these new scanners in airports by the end of 2019. It's weird looking, but yeah, I like the, the concept. Yeah. I like. And it yeah. really gets us through quicker. Mm -hmm. It's not That's like right. the way is going to get, uh, you know, less crowded. Exactly. Right, right. Uh, and obviously this time of the year is always crowded across Central Florida. And the weather, you want it to hold up. We had sure some uh, pretty healthy <laughs> storms here yesterday, ladies. I do expect more rain again today. It's going to be a little bit more garden variety this afternoon, but still some stronger storms are possible. We're just starting to see those bubble back up. It's a nice uh, early afternoon, though, across the beaches. Uh, earlier at the lunchtime hour, I showed you Daytona Beach. This, my friends, is Cocoa Beach, and we're dry across the area beaches for now, but showers and storms will begin to move back in. If you're viewing us along the coast, make sure you turn and point your head over your shoulder. Look inland for the storms to be developing. They'll be moving from inland to coastal locations. So temperatures right now, mainly in the mid and the upper 80s. We've hit 90 in Kissimmee, 86 in Orlando, 87 in Sanford, 84 up in Daytona Beach at the hour. Winds will stay out of the southwest. And again, quite blustery out there. And the heat index is no joke, especially if you have some sunshine right now. It's a triple digit heat index in Kissimmee, right at 100. Most areas will stay in the mid 90s for heat index. And it's a little bit cooler with some thicker clouds in our northwest areas. So, again, it's not a typical uh, July afternoon where we have some spots where it feels like the 80s and others it feels like the triple digits. Just starting to see the rain percolating back up here. Get a few scattered showers going. Crossed I-4 into portions of Seminole and Volusia counties. A rowdy storm back out. Uh, trying to get into Sumter County right now. But the first signs of rain redeveloping right now. Just a little shower across Deltona. One is trying to ramp up as it moves northeast of Oviedo. Here's a decent little downpour in the far northern sides of Seminole County. I'll take you into that one. That one's going to cross I-4 right across St. John's. Should mainly miss downtown. 
around Sanford, basically headed up towards the northern parts of uh, uh, Metro Sanford area, up towards the Enterprise, the Berry area, Casadega, one of the spots that could get hit by some rain, same thing for Orange City. Then you see this storm, which does have a little bit of lightning right across State Road 50 in far southern Sumter County, a little bit of rain towards Lake Pan. But overall, the rain is just getting going here. By about 45 minutes from now, Future Track really blossoms things. And you know, in July, things can get going in a hurry across Central Florida. And that's what I expect as we go into the mid afternoon hours. So, pretty widespread storms again by 2 33 o'clock. We'll see some heavier downpours. We'll see some gusty winds just mainly staying below severe criteria. Remember, you got to get up to near 60 mile an hour winds for a severe thunderstorm warning to be issued. So, 40, even 50 mile an hour winds will not prompt a severe thunderstorm warning from the Weather Service. It's below the criteria, but it certainly could knock down some tree branches. That is a possibility for this afternoon. Though, again, as I said, it's a much more typical July. July afternoon, and we'll get some rain to linger through portions of the evening hours, especially for the metro off to the south. So overall, the risk of severe storms is actually south of our area for today, uh, down towards uh, Fort Pierce, uh, Lake Okeechobee, and parts south from there. For this afternoon, though, again, a lot of lightning is still expected out of these storms, one to two inches of rain, and some wind gusts of up to 40 miles an hour. Highs will mainly stay in the upper 80s, but as you saw, in Kissimmee, some spots could hit 90. Then for tomorrow, we'll still see a few scattered showers around for the morning hours, with with more showers and storms developing in a very scattered variety for tomorrow. Don't expect anything to be too concentrated for your Tuesday, but again, if you have outdoor plans, you're headed to the attractions of the beaches, it's not going to be a washout, but we'll see some of these storms passing on by once again. Overall, a higher than normal chance of rain for your Tuesday and carry that into Wednesday as well. So on that five-day forecast, there's a 60% chance of storms between now and Wednesday. It will be drier starting on Thursday, about to a typical 40% chance of storms. And I'll carry that into the weekend as well, but it does get a little bit toasty with daytime highs well above 90 degrees. Marty? Summer is starting to wind down for Central Florida students. If you can believe that, it's almost time for the annual Back to School Bash. Nine Family Connection is looking for student sponsors and volunteers to help at the Hope Now event on Sunday, July 29th. That's this Sunday at the Amway Center. To learn how you can be involved in helping Central Florida students prepare for the school year, visit NineFamily.com. He's a baseball fan who took a lot of heat on social media when he appeared to steal a foul ball meant for a little kid. Why some are now coming to his defense, saying this video does not tell the whole story. The most accurate local forecast every day on Channel 9 Eyewitness News. Watch Channel 9 Eyewitness News on your Apple TV, Roku, or Amazon Fire TV. Central Florida's most watched news and weather. It's free on demand. Watch it live or on your own time. Download the Channel 9 app right now. Just search WFTV. It's the Honda Summer Spectacular event going on now at Holler Honda and Classic Honda in Orlando. Every vehicle is clearly marked with our best price up front, so you see your price the minute you walk in. Right now, for a limited time, you can lease a brand new 2018 Honda Civic LX for only $159 per month, or lease the 2018 Honda CRV LX for only $229 per month. It's the Honda Summer Spectacular event going on now at Holler Honda and Classic Honda in Orlando. There are more than 3,000 children waiting to be adopted in Florida. The average foster child eligible for adoption waits two and a half years for that special day. When it comes, Mattress One wants to be there. Many of these children have never had a bed of their own. Mattress One wants to change that. This year, every child adopted through community-based care of Central Florida will receive a brand new mattress from Mattress One. Together, we can make a difference in the lives of foster children. Go someplace really cool, like Ocala, Marion County. Enter our sweepstakes for a chance to win our three-night stay, three days of play getaway. Go to OcalaGetaway.com today for more information. Chill with us and explore Ocala, Marion County. This is Orlando. This is where we believe in magic and fantasies and wishing upon stars and the power of the imagination. This is where we dream, where we think smarter and play harder. So if you think you know all there is to know about Orlando, you're in for a big surprise. Because until you join our community and see all the reasons we're amazing, you don't know the half of it. K92.3 is Orlando's number one for new country. Hi, this is Blake Shelton. This is Jason Aldean. This is Luke Bryan. 
Here's a look at some of the stories we're working on for Eyewitness News at 4. The city of Orlando will vote today on whether to extend some protections for undocumented immigrants. For Eyewitness News at 4, we're learning how the policy could help some undocumented victims find a path toward citizenship. We have the results of a road narrowing test in Orlando. At 4, we'll tell you why the city says it was a success, but some nearby business owners say it was a traffic nightmare. Video from yesterday's Cubs game quickly went viral after it appeared to show an adult stealing a foul ball meant for a little kid. This video blew up on Twitter. Watch as the man sitting in the second row snatches the foul ball before the little boy can reach it. Well, the Cubs felt badly for the little boy, and so they made sure he went home with a ball signed by infielder Javier Baez. But some reports, or some sports commentators rather, say what the video doesn't show is that the man already helped that little boy get a foul ball earlier in the game. So this lucky little guy ended up going home with two baseballs yesterday. Hmm. Stocks are up on Wall Street so far. Here's a look at the numbers this afternoon. We'll have closing figures for you later today on Channel 9 Eyewitness News at 4. Stocks are brought to you by Safe Touch Security Systems. We live with such a, a unique climate here in Central Florida, and we know that storms can turn severe in a moment's notice. A million watt radar can keep you ahead of that storm. We can give you earlier warning when the storm happens. We could track these storms right down to street level, and we have all the tools here in Severe Weather Center 9 to keep you safe. It's more than just all the data. We have great data, but it comes down to, I think, the experience that we have. So no matter what does happen with that storm, we're going to be here for you. That's our promise. What is icflorida.com? It gives us great insider information of what's going on locally. If I go to the IC Florida app, it's easy for me to see what's new and what's hot. If SD is there, you're, you're there. there. And SD is everywhere. Having the food critic on here, Scott Joseph, definitely helps to see what's good, what's nice. It makes you feel like you're part of this town, so why not? IC Florida, go local, go fun! Go inside Central Florida with icflorida.com. Brought to you by Daytona Beach. Selfless service is the principle that guides Army National Guard soldiers to be ready whenever disaster strikes. They have a stake in the well-being of the neighborhoods where they live and work. They train part-time to be ready to serve at all times. Selfless service. It's what inspires the men and women of the Army National Guard to be part of something greater than themselves. Visit NationalGuard.com to learn more. Now you can get Channel 9 Eyewitness News updates on your Amazon Echo device. How cool is this? You ask a question, Alexa, what's in the news today? And it gives you an answer. Here's your flash briefing from WFTV in Orlando. Good morning, everyone. I'm Channel 9's Jamie Holmes. Today, the union's representing... To get news updates, open the Alexa app on your phone, search WFTV under Skills, then enable the flash briefing. We're on to you, corruption. Government waste, your time is up. And all you scams and ripoffs out there, your days are numbered. Because Nine Investigates is coming after you. Every day, we're exposing the lies, loopholes, and con artists trying to cheat us all. Nine Investigates, only on Channel 9 Eyewitness News. It's coverage you can count on. Rocky afternoon on the way. Sure is a repeat uh, of yesterday, it would appear. Let's go over to Rusty McCraney at Severe Weather Center 9. At least how widespread they're going to be, Marty and Vanessa. Hopefully a little bit lower intensity, but they're beginning to bubble up right now. There it is, an early warning. Doppler 9, some rain for civil portions of Volusia and Brevard counties. The rain will become more widespread. And yes, they'll turn into some heavier storms later this afternoon. Marty, Vanessa. Thank you for watching Channel 9 Eyewitness News at noon. The Chew is next. See ya. Guns N' Roses are classic hits. Bon Jovi is classic hits. The Eagles are classic hits. Orlando's classic hits are always on the new 98.9 WMMO. Do you know a local environmental volunteer? Someone who's preserving and improving the outdoor spaces we share? 
Whether picking up litter, planting a community garden, or restoring a shoreline, Nine Family Connection, our partners, and the Trust for Public Land want to recognize your hero. Nominate someone for the Cox Conserves Hero Award, and they could win $10,000 for their environmental nonprofit and compete for an additional $50,000. Nominate your hero now at NineFamily.com. As a former judge, thousands of attorneys came through my courtroom, and when my wife had a slip and fall accident and needed an attorney, I told her, let's call Dan Newland. Dan and his staff were very professional and always was by my side. I was honored to help Norma with her slip and fall accident case, and I'd be honored to help you too. Call me now at 407-888-8000. At the close of the case, Dan Newland's office obtained my wife $200,000. Thank you, Dan. Tax-free savings, free gifts. You get it all during Mattress One's incredible tax-free mattress sale. Buy a Sealy mattress, just $299, tax-free. Buy a Sealy Queen 8-inch memory foam mattress, only $399, tax-free. We have it in stock, so you can take it home today. Plus, enjoy free gifts and 0% APR for five years with equal payments. You get the mattress, you get the savings. We take care of the sale tax. Visit mattressone.com to find a store near you. A flash flood warning is now in effect for Tallahassee, Florida. Keeping a NOAA radio in your home will alert you of any dangerous weather in the area. In the event of a flash flood, be prepared to evacuate to a safe location. Secure all important documents and belongings and avoid areas subject to flooding. Follow your pre-planned evacuation route and never drive through flooded roadways. Keep you and your family safe. Get a plan. Nancy Alvarez, only on Channel 9 Eyewitness News.
Flash flood warning is now in effect for Tallahassee, Florida. Keeping a NOAA radio in your home will alert you of any dangerous weather in the area. In the event of a flash flood, be prepared to evacuate to a safe location. Secure all important documents and belongings and avoid areas subject to flooding. Follow your pre-planned evacuation route and never drive through flooded roadways. Keep you and your family safe. Get a plan. That moment when Steve kept it real. How big are your lips? You blind? That moment Josh went TMI. I got irritable bowel syndrome. And you thought wearing a light gray suit was a good <laughs> idea? That moment when Steve learned a new dance. Oh, I go down there. <laughs> well, ain't no up, though. Don't miss a moment on Family Feud. Weeknights at 7 on TV 27.
Steve kept it real. How big are your lips? You blind? <laughs> that moment Josh went TMI. I got irritable bowel syndrome. And you thought wearing a light gray suit was a good <laughs> idea? <laughs> that moment when Steve learned a new dance. Oh, I go down there. <laughs> well, ain't no up, though. <laughs> Don't miss a moment on Family Feud. Tonight at 7 on TV 27. At Channel 9 Eyewitness News, we know you need more than just a five-day forecast. That's why we use the tools here in Severe Weather Center 9 to break down the science behind your weather. We take you beyond the numbers to focus on how weather impacts your life, giving you a first-hand perspective so you'll always have the full story. Every day, every newscast. Channel 9 Eyewitness News is weather coverage you can count on.
soldiers in the Army National Guard live up to a set of time-honored principles. They stand ready to respond to any crisis. They serve in their communities as citizens and as soldiers. They train part-time to be ready to serve at all times. Learn more at NationalGuard.com. Storms here can move 65 miles an hour. I've covered tornadoes moving at almost 70. At Channel 9, we have the most advanced technology. We're looking for signs of spin rotation in case a tornado drops out. That's why we have the experienced team that we have. We want to give you the time frame of when the storm's going to hit. We can let you know where a storm's going to be, when it's going to be there, and what you need to know to stay safe. This is what we do. We take pride in this. I'm going to be here, and we're all going to be here, and that's coverage you can count on.
Channel 9 Eyewitness News updates on your Amazon Echo device. How cool is this? You ask a question, Alexa, what's in the news today? And it gives you an answer. Here's your flash briefing from WFTV in Orlando. Good morning, everyone. I'm Channel 9's Jamie Holmes. Today, the union's representing... To get news updates, open the Alexa app on your phone, search WFTV under Skills, then enable the flash briefing.
is Orlando. This is where we believe in magic and fantasies and wishing upon stars and the power of the imagination. This is where we dream, where we think smarter and play harder. So if you think you know all there is to know about Orlando, you're in for a big surprise. Because until you join our community and see all the reasons we're amazing, you don't know the half of it. Learn life's greatest lessons on Seinfeld's Guide to Social Norms. This is normal. Avoid yelling or screaming with anger. One should never play with one's food. Don't be a slave to fashion. But sure. And never do this in polite company. Discover more social norms to follow on Seinfeld five times a week. This is an ideology I can embrace. Tonight at 6 on TV 27.
on to your corruption. Government waste, your time is up. And all you scams and ripoffs out there, your days are numbered because Nine Investigates is coming after you. Every day, we're exposing the lies, loopholes, and con artists trying to cheat us all. Nine Investigates, only on Channel 9 Eyewitness News. It's coverage you can count on. Weather is at its worst. Count on the team in Severe Weather Center 9, alerting you first when storms move in, keeping you connected when it matters most. The tools you need to track weather where you live, with insight from Chief Meteorologist Tom Terry and the experts who know Central Florida. Any screen, anywhere, so you're informed when it matters most. Severe Weather Center 9, coverage you can count on.
expert who knows more than just I-4. FHP is working this crash, so I just worked out this alternate route to cut your drive time in half. Channel 9 Eyewitness News this morning, weekdays at 5. When hurricanes hit home or tornadoes touch down, trust the team in Severe Weather Center 9 to give you weather coverage you can count on.
Selfless service is the principle that guides Army National Guard soldiers to be ready whenever disaster strikes. They have a stake in the well-being of the neighborhoods where they live and work. They train part-time to be ready to serve at all times. Selfless service. It's what inspires the men and women of the Army National Guard to be part of something greater than themselves. Visit NationalGuard.com to learn more. Definitely gonna watch that. I'll be there for you. Loving this. Friends, weekdays at four on TV 27.
live with such a, a unique climate here in Central Florida. And we know that storms can turn severe in a moment's notice. A million watt radar can keep you ahead of that storm. We can give you earlier warning when a storm happens. We could track these storms right down to street level. And we have all the tools here in Severe Weather Center 9 to keep you safe. It's more than just all the data. We have great data, but it comes down to, I think, the experience that we have. So no matter what does happen with that storm, we're going to be here for you. That's our promise. What is icflorida.com? It gives us great insider information of what's going on locally. If I go to the IC Florida app, it's easy for me to see what's new and what's hot. If SD is there, you're yeah. there. And SD is everywhere. Having the food critic on here, Scott Joseph, definitely helps to see what's good, what's not. It makes you feel like you're part of this town, so why not? IC Florida, go local, go fun! Go inside Central Florida with icflorida.com. Brought to you by Daytona Beach.
We know mornings are tough. You have things to do, places to go. Is that still good? Uh, no. That's why Channel 9 Eyewitness News is here for you. This isn't small talk on a couch. It's real news from journalists with real experience. A weather forecast you can actually use. Storms are going to pop up right when the kids get out of school. And a traffic expert who knows more than just I-4. I just worked out this alternate route. Channel 9 Eyewitness News this morning, weekdays at 5. Give me 10 minutes. We know mornings are tough. You have things to do, places to go. Is that still good? Uh, no. That's why Channel 9 Eyewitness News is here for you. This isn't small talk on a couch. It's real news from journalists with real experience. A weather forecast you can actually use. Storms are going to pop up right when the kids get out of school. And a traffic expert who knows more than just I-4. I just worked out this alternate route. Channel 9 Eyewitness News this morning, weekdays at 5.
life's greatest lessons on Seinfeld's Guide to Social Norms. This is normal. A very yelling or screaming with anger. One should never play with one's food. Don't be a slave to fashion. But sure. And never do this in polite company. Discover more social norms to follow on Seinfeld five times a week. This is an ideology I can embrace. Weeknights at 6 on TV 27. Soldiers in the Army National Guard live up to a set of time-honored principles. They stand ready to respond to any crisis. They serve in their communities as citizens and as soldiers. They train part-time to be ready to serve at all times. Learn more at NationalGuard.com.
kept it real. How big are your lips? You blind? That moment Josh went TMI. I got irritable bowel syndrome. And you thought wearing a light gray suit was a good <laughs> idea? That moment when Steve learned a new dance. Oh, I go down there. <laughs> well, ain't no up, though. Don't miss a moment on Family Feud. Weeknights at 7 on TV 27. At Channel 9 Eyewitness News, we know you need more than just a five-day forecast. That's why we use the tools here in Severe Weather Center 9 to break down the science behind your weather. We take you beyond the numbers to focus on how weather impacts your life, giving you a first-hand perspective so you'll always have the full story. Every day, every newscast. Channel 9 Eyewitness News is weather coverage you can count on.
A flash flood warning is now in effect for Tallahassee, Florida. Keeping a NOAA radio in your home will alert you of any dangerous weather in the area. In the event of a flash flood, be prepared to evacuate to a safe location. Secure all important documents and belongings and avoid areas subject to flooding. Follow your pre-planned evacuation route and never drive through flooded roadways. Keep you and your family safe. Get a plan. Power 95.3. It's a lot of bad things. Power 95.3. Why don't you just meet me in the middle? Two hours commercial free. At 11.30, 4.30, and 8.30. Power 95.3.
Now you can get Channel 9 Eyewitness News updates on your Amazon Echo device. How cool is this? You ask a question, Alexa, what's in the news today? And it gives you an answer. Here's your flash briefing from WFTV in Orlando. Good morning, everyone. I'm Channel 9's Jamie Holmes. Today, the union's representing... To get news updates, open the Alexa app on your phone, search WFTV under Skills, then enable the flash briefing. Learn life's greatest lessons on Seinfeld's Guide to Social Norms. This is normal. Avoid yelling or screaming with anger. One should never play with one's food. Don't be a slave to fashion. But shirt. Sure. And never do this in polite company. Discover more social norms to follow on Seinfeld five times a week. This is an ideology I can embrace. Tonight at 6 on TV 27.
Eyewitness News at 10. We're going to make it worth your while. It's not the news you already know. It's new local stories happening now. Investigations that give you better perspective from local neighborhoods. Inside sources reveal it's a major community problem that's been ignored for years. Weather conditions change every minute. That's why I'm constantly tracking your local forecast. I'm Martha Sigalski. And I'm George Estevez. Join us for Channel 9 Eyewitness News at 10 on TV 27. When Steve kept it real. How big are your lips? You blind? That moment Josh went TMI. I got irritable bowel syndrome. And you thought wearing a light gray suit was a good <laughs> idea? That moment when Steve learned a new dance. Oh, I go down there. <laughs> well, ain't no up, though. Don't miss a moment on Family Feud. Tonight at 7 on TV 27.
on to your corruption. Government waste, your time is up. And all you scams and ripoffs out there, your days are numbered. Because Nine Investigates is coming after you. Every day, we're exposing the lies, loopholes, and con artists trying to cheat us all. Nine Investigates, only on Channel 9 Eyewitness News. It's coverage you can count on. Storms here can move 65 miles an hour. I've covered tornadoes moving at almost 70. At Channel 9, we have the most advanced technology. We're looking for signs of spin, rotation, in case a tornado drops out. That's why we have the experienced team that we have. We want to give you the time frame of when the storm's going to hit. We can let you know where a storm's going to be, when it's going to be there, and what you need to know to stay safe. This is what we do. We take pride in this. I'm going to be here, and we're all going to be here, and that's coverage you can count on.
Selfless service is the principle that guides Army National Guard soldiers to be ready whenever disaster strikes. They have a stake in the well-being of the neighborhoods where they live and work. They train part-time to be ready to serve at all times. Selfless service, it's what inspires the men and women of the Army National Guard to be part of something greater than themselves. Visit NationalGuard.com to learn more. Soldiers in the Army National Guard live up to a set of time-honored principles. They stand ready to respond to any crisis. They serve in their communities as citizens and as soldiers. They train part-time to be ready to serve at all times. Learn more at NationalGuard.com.
beach days or rain delays, when hurricanes hit home or tornadoes touch down, when experience really matters, no one knows your weather like Chief Meteorologist Tom Terry and the experts in Severe Weather Center 9. Tracking storms down to your street with earlier warnings so you have more time to prepare when you need it most. Trust the team in Severe Weather Center 9 to give you weather coverage you can count on. This is Orlando. This is where we believe in magic and fantasies and wishing upon stars and the power of the imagination. This is where we dream, where we think smarter and play harder. So if you think you know all there is to know about Orlando, you're in for a big surprise. Because until you join our community and see all the reasons we're amazing, you don't know the half of it. is Channel 9 Eyewitness News at 4. Coverage you can count on. Police say a carjacking and shooting turned into a high-speed chase in Orlando. Drove by me at at least 120 miles an hour. What an eyewitness revealed only to Channel 9. Plus, why leaders say a policy change meant to protect undocumented immigrants won't make Orlando a sanctuary city. And breaking in Osceola County, the extortion plot the deputies now say led a handyman to murder an elderly couple as they sat down for breakfast at this home. Investigators say those two victims were found shot in the head during a well-being check. You are among the first to see this story break if you get breaking news alerts from the WFTV News app on your phone. And George, we've been working on this story for a while now. Yeah, we sure have, Vanessa. Deputies, in fact, now say Roosevelt and Jeanette Dixon were dead inside of this home for nearly a week before the pair was actually discovered. Today, investigators say Federico Gondola was the handyman who had fixed their computer, and they say he shot them over some sort of extortion plot. Let's get more on this now. Channel 9's Shannon Butler actually broke the story about an hour ago, and Shannon, you're live at the home now where this actually all went down and played out. Such a sad ending. Yeah, according to detectives, the couple had about a million dollars between cash in the bank and those life insurance policy is unclear if Federico Gondola knew that, but they, he knew enough about the money the couple had and about their home, including those security cameras there, because when detectives got here, the server to those cameras 
was ripped out. It's hard to tell by looking at this Kissimmee home that anything bad happened here. From the outside, it looks like any suburban home in any suburban neighborhood. It was even equipped with a security system, but that security system didn't keep the two elderly people inside safe. That's because the person accused of killing them was no stranger. According to this arrest affidavit, it seems that Roosevelt and Jeanette Dixon were just sitting down to breakfast when Federico Gondola showed up. And what happened next is still part of the investigation, but according to the paperwork, Gondola told detectives he was their handyman and worked on their computer. Gondola said he found child pornography on that computer and trying to use that to extort money from the 74-year-old man. Gondola said Mr. Dixon came after him with a gun, so he shot the elderly man and then his wife because she walked in on it. Federico Gondola? Now a week after the Dixon's murder, this man gondola is behind bars. Detectives say the couple had just returned from a trip from New York where they also lived. Detectives say they talked on their cell phone every day, even after they returned, and one of the last phone calls they made was to gondola. Now, we did do some checking on gondola. We could only find here in Osceola County a traffic violation, which brings a question about how a man just with a traffic ticket is now accused of killing two people inside this home. We have reached out to Osceola County. We have not yet heard back, but we did hear from sources that gondola actually asked for a lawyer pretty early on in that interrogation, providing no more details about exactly what happened here. We are live in Kissimmee. Shannon Butler. Channel 9 Eyewitness News. Right now, storms are either at the coast or moving toward it just in time for that evening commute. Certified Chief Meteorologist Tom Terry is tracking those storms right now in Severe Weather Center 9. That's right, just moving offshore of Cocoa Beach, Vanessa, and it's been one of these days where it started early this morning, then we had another line move through of storms in the metro area now. It's along the east coast. Here's our live view right now. Storms offshore. There's more back behind it we're going to be watching, but by far, I think some of the highest uh, rainfall rates and the most thunder is just now moving off the coast of northern Volusia County. You may have gotten a push alert on your phone. We send those alerts out to you, let you know those storms are coming if you have our WFTV uh, weather app. Right now we have storms offshore. Here's Titusville. Down toward the south, we have scattered storms along 520 that's moving into Cocoa, Rockledge, and over toward the uh, Footman area there across southern Merritt Island. So this is kind of the leading edge of some of the heavier storms that we've been tracking. We're getting a little bit more up here to the north. This one right over Tomoka Estates. That is just on the north side of Ormond Beach. Now for the next couple of hours, I'm still watching moisture coming in from the Gulf and we're going to turn the knob up a little bit on our rainfall machine. Higher rain chances back in the forecast, George. All right, Tom, Orange County deputies say they caught two murder suspects involved in a wild chase and shootout. Last week's shooting ended on Alafaya Trail when a Jeep involved lost control and crashed into two cars. Well, deputies say the driver of the Jeep, Jonathan Bryant, died after he was shot. Today, deputies said Andreas Lee and Maurice Smith are facing murder and attempted murder charges. Channel 9's Steve Barrett is working to find out more about the suspects and what may have started this whole thing. We'll have much more on Eyewitness News starting at 5. Meanwhile, investigators say a man who was driving on a suspended license is now accused in a deadly hit and run in Orange County. Investigators had identified the make and model of the vehicle that had hit 49-year-old Jorge Arias on State Road 50 in Bithlow, but they couldn't identify the driver until today. Troopers say Daniel Lyon Strickland of MIMS turned himself in at the Coco FHP station this morning. Today, the city of Orlando decided to expand a policy to improve relations with the immigrant community. Going forward, police and all city workers will not ask about or discriminate against someone based on their immigra immigration status. Channel 9's Sierra Putman is live at City Hall. Sierra, earlier today, there was a rally there at City Hall in support of this change. And just about 15 minutes ago, city commissioners voted unanimously to pass this policy expansion. And like you said, hours before, people were outside of City Hall supporting it. Well, it's always been um, this awkward relationship because, um, you know, you look for your police to keep you safe and when, everything, when anything goes wrong. But that's not the case for undocumented immigrants who fear talking to police could lead to deportation. Azaria Barrera is now a dreamer working legally thanks to the deferred action of childhood arrivals. She says the fear is there even when reporting a crime. We don't have trust to begin with and the community won't report crimes. She thinks trust will improve with the city's 
expansion of the police department's fair treatment of all, or Trust Act policy. It prevents officers from detaining or questioning someone about their immigration status, especially victims of crimes. If you simply report a crime or you have a traffic stop, you will not be led to deportation. The city's policy will now apply to all city workers, stating city workers cannot deny services based on a person's ability to speak English or their immigration status. But supporters stress this is not a step toward a sanctuary city. We will not be a sanctuary city. Sanctuary city would have holding cells that would harbor criminals. We don't do that. They hope this fosters more cooperation with police and brings undocumented immigrants out of the shadows. We need every pair of eyes, pair of ears to, to fight crime. Fear of the police, and this will open um, the doors for them. They'll ha their voice will be heard. Now, the city says it will continue to follow all state and federal laws. This policy also says that police will fill out a form that could help some undocumented victims of crimes get citizenship. I'm going to have that part of the story coming up at 5 o'clock. Reporting live in Orlando, Sierra Putman, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. All right, Sierra, thank you. Meanwhile, we're staying in contact with the medical examiner's office, but there's no new information on how a baby died at a home daycare. Nine-month-old Zachary Jackson was found dead here at the Dodd Family Home Daycare in Claremont Tuesday. The daycare is run out of a neighborhood and is properly licensed. It has been in operation for more than 30 years. New at 4, only Channel 9's Phil Sutton talked with a man who saw the crash that ended a violent carjacking turned high-speed chase. Phil, that car was stolen on Curry Ford Road along a long way from the intersection at OBT and Oak Ridge Road, where you're joining us live right now. Long way away, the car was stolen way over off of Curry Ford, actually. Goldenrod is the area, then spotted later off of Curry Ford. Now, the reason I'm here right now is because they just wrapped up their investigation, which included the car in question crashing in the driveway to this uh, Payless shoe store. Very interesting because uh, two people out of that car got taken down for questioning, and the cops told me, quote, they're in a lot of trouble. Twelve hours ago, this silver Toyota Camry was in one piece and just about to take its trusty owner to work. But by noon, it had been broadsided at the hands of a trio of thieves. Came by speeding. Orange County, an SUV came from the middle. Excuse me. Came from the middle. Followed the car. He was going at a high rate of speed that I knew he was going to make this corner. This man told me he saw it all. Silver car. Yeah. Drove by me at least 120 miles an hour. Cops looking for that carjacked car spotted it at the corner of Cimarron and Curry Ford. They tried to pull the driver over, but they say he sped off and went all the way down close to Florida Mall. It was a vehicle pursuit with high speeds and them driving recklessly, so they're in a lot of trouble for the reckless driving in the vehicle pursuit, and we're investigating to see if they were involved in the armed carjacking. Somehow, the innocent occupants of the car the thieves hit walked away without a scratch. That witness told me the thieves themselves weren't so lucky. One went to the hospital, and two got wrestled to the ground. It was also dramatic. He figured it was one of the wanted killers from a string of summer murders in Orange County. So I'm like, dang, there goes that guy, you know, that, you know, they're chasing. And sure enough, man, like, I'd say 20 cars, 20 cop cars came by. Well, it may not have been that, but this story is plenty wild all on its own. And I just talked with the victim in this case. The carjacking part of this started with him being shot at by those carjackers and then apparently them turning their gun on the home where his family was sleeping. I'm putting his side of the story together for Eyewitness News at 5. Live in Orange County, Field Sutton, Channel 9, Eyewitness News. An Orlando family is finalizing funeral arrangements for a pregnant woman who was killed in a drive-by shooting one week ago. A 22-month-old boy and a 13-year-old were also shot but survived. The family gave us permission to share this photo of Cameron, the youngest victim. They tell us he will be having surgery soon. Investigators say two men were seen driving away from the Pine Hills scene in a white, older model sedan. So far, investigators haven't made any arrests. It's been nine days now since a man was shot and killed in Longwood, and we still don't know whether police have identified a suspect there or what may have caused the violence. Richard Javier died after being shot last Saturday in a parking lot along State Road 434 near Powell Street. So far, police have only released a heavily redacted incident report and haven't said whether the public could be at risk. We're also asking University of Central Florida police if they have any leads on suspects in two sex crimes reported on campus. Earlier this month, two women told officers a man performed a sex 
Sparks Act in front of them in a parking garage. Several days later, witnesses told them a man exposed himself near a soccer field. Police say they do not believe the incidents are related. The Highway Patrol has identified a motorcycle rider killed in a crash on Colonial this morning. Troopers, troopers say 30-year-old Oscar Pedraza was killed when a pickup truck hit him as he was turning from the 417 exit ramp onto Colonial Drive. Troopers say the truck's driver had a red flashing light, which you treat like a stop sign. They say Pedraza had a yellow flashing light, which means proceed with caution. We're asking troopers if the person driving the truck will face any charges. Florida Hospital is the first in the nation to get an advanced surgical robot system. This robotic surgical system is the first one to get approval from the FDA since the year 2000. Doctors can sit comfortably and control the tools partially with their eyes. Now, the system is designed to keep doctors from getting tired and is less invasive for patients. Right now, it can only be used in a handful of different procedures. State troopers are trying to find the driver who hit and killed an Orlando man on the beach line in a suspected case of road rage. Coming up, you'll hear the emotional message the victim's loved ones had for the suspect. Plus. Police say this video shows a man firing a stolen police rifle in a local neighborhood. Next, how officers say they were able to quickly track him down. We are tracking some pretty big storms still along the coast of Brevard County right now. Moving right over Tiesville, moving toward the outer part of Merritt Island. And I'm updating why our rainy pattern is going to stay in high gear. We live with such a, a unique climate here in Central Florida. And we know that storms can turn severe in a moment's notice. A million watt radar can keep you ahead of that storm. We can give you earlier warnings when the storm happens. We could track these storms right down to street level. And we have all the tools here in Severe Weather Center 9 to keep you safe. It's more than just all the data. We have great data, but it comes down to, I think, the experience that we have. So no matter what does happen with that storm, we're going to be here for you. That's our promise. Don't miss the golden opportunity sales event going on now at the all-new Lexus of Orlando, where you can drive a 2018 ES350 for only $329 a month. To see our entire inventory, visit us today at LexusOfOrlando.com. For many local families, back to school can be a financial burden. And many students don't have the school supplies they need to start the school year. Nine Family Connection and Hope Now Foundation want to help thousands of local students receive health screenings, backpacks, and resources they need at the Back to School Bash July 29th at the Amway Center. You can sponsor a student for just $20. Help us make sure they have the tools they need for a successful school year. Donate today at ninefamily.com. For many local families, back to school can be a financial burden. And many students don't have the school supplies they need to start the school year. Nine Family Connection and Hope Now Foundation want to help thousands of local students receive health screenings, backpacks, and resources they need at the Back to School Bash July 29th at the Amway Center. You can sponsor a student for just $20. Help us make sure they have the tools they need for a successful school year. Donate today at ninefamily.com. Hi, welcome to Sun State Ford. I'm Frank. Friendly, reliable, accessible, never overbearing, and knowledgeable. Hi, Frank. I'm so glad to see you. I just came from the other place. Hey, I'm Pat. Physical, aggressive, and territorial. Uh, we have coupons. Yeah, Frank is better. Shop with Frank during our summer sales event. Drive this 2018 Ford Escape SE for $209 per month or 0% financing for 72 months or receive up to $3,000 cash back. Stick with Frank at Sun State Ford. Let me just a little bit, Mike. Give me 10 minutes. We know mornings are tough. You have things to do, places to go. Is that still good? Ugh, no. That's why Channel 9 Eyewitness News is here for you. This isn't small talk on a couch. It's real news from journalists with real experience. A weather forecast you can actually use. Storms are going to pop up right when the kids get out of school. And a traffic expert who knows more than just I-4. I just worked out this alternate route. Channel 9 Eyewitness News this morning, weekdays at 5. Make the short drive to Lexus of Orlando today because it's your opportunity to save on luxury during the Golden Opportunity Sales Event. Drive a 2018 ES350, finance rates as low as 2.9%, and we never charge a dealer fee. LexusofOrlando.com. Covering Lake County's biggest stories, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. New from Lake County, officers have recovered a police rifle that was stolen from a marked cruiser more than a year ago. 
And they also have video of the suspect firing the weapon in a neighborhood. Channel 9's Michael Laparty is live now at the police station. This is in Leesburg. And Michael, two officers actually heard the shots while on patrol. Well, George, not only those officers, but also neighbors. We're live outside the police office right now because we just got an update on the case. And they told us that stolen gun was found in a home just a few blocks down this way. In this grainy video provided by Leesburg Police, you can see a man fire three times into the ground. Neighbors heard the shots, and so did officers. Once they arrived, investigators learned that rifle actually belongs to Tavares Police and was reported stolen more than a year ago. It does appear from the video that there was may have been some kind of a uh, disagreement uh, between neighbors or someone nearby, and he was trying to send a message. Lieutenant Joe Iozzi says Leesburg police arrested 26-year-old Kendrick Jones for grand theft of police equipment. The suspect told investigators he didn't own a gun or fire any shots. That's when someone turned over the video. Officers went to clear out the house, marked with a danger sign, and found the rifle inside, along with ammunition, shell case and drugs. The items are all laid out in this photo. A check of the serial number linked the weapon back to DeVere's police. Anytime a stolen firearm is recovered and, and returned to its rightful owner, uh, be it a firearm or any other stolen property, we're happy to get the uh, property back to, to the people that it belongs to. Two other men who lived at the home, 40-year-old Gary Malcolm and 20-year-old Tyreek Smith, were also arrested on drug charges. The gun will be returned to police. Tavares police told us that gun was stolen out of the officer's cruiser as, as, as it was parked right in his front yard. And we found out that this led to a department policy change. I'm breaking that down in our next story coming up at 5 o'clock. Reporting live, Michael Loparty, Channel 9, Eyewitness News. State troopers and the Florida Department of Children and Families came together this morning to remind parents just how dangerous hot cars can be. And they hosted this demonstration today in Coco to show how quickly things can heat up inside a car without the air on. Law enforcement officers are also encouraging parents to establish a routine and double check the back seat after every single trip. And there's all kinds of different things you can do as long as you develop a routine every single time to go back there and look. They say you can tie the child's shoes to your keys or leave something that you'll need in the back seat, like your handbag maybe. Officials also want people to be vigilant in public places during these hot summer months and call for help if they notice a child in danger. People across the U.S. are cleaning up from extreme weather today. Millions of Americans up and down the East Coast got slammed with torrential rain, damaging wind, and flash floods over the weekend. We even felt some of that here in Central Florida with a strong thunderstorm capsized this boat in Titusville. The boat that's capsized, possibly six people in the water. The storm's kicking up again. I'm losing visibility. Eleven people, including two children, had to fight for their lives. They made it from the water to a small island until rescue boats could carry them back to shore. I was actually on the coast this weekend, and on Sunday, when that sky opened up, it meant business. Yep, uh, this is going to be one of these wet, stormy patterns for the next couple of days. We talk about our weather app. You know, it was sending me alerts. Mm -hmm. We were outside the other day and gives you that extra warning. It's all free in the app store, but boy, things can change in a big hurry. There's Cocoa Beach with a storm coming through as we look northbound toward Merritt Island and Daytona Beach. You've had on and off storms, and we've got gray clouds east and west, north and south. We're still 90, although it's cooling down now at the airport uh, over by Patrick Air Force Base and Daytona. You had a high of only 87 today. It was 78 now. Still have some energy yet to come here later on tonight. By far, though, the highest coverage of thunderstorms moved by actually this morning. And then we're getting a little secondary batch of rain. This kind of repeat customer philosophy is what we're going to be watching for the next few days as well. That's a pretty heavy thunderstorm right now. Just past the uh, St. John's River, heading toward Relay and over by the uh, DuPont area. We're going to keep an eye on that in southern parts of Flagler County. These are the storms we saw through our camera a moment ago. Merritt Island down towards Sharps into Cocoa. Uh, Cocoa Beach will be over here along the coast. So you'll be coming up eventually as well. Aurora over by South Patrick. So this is all southern and central Brevard County next to get some of these heavy storms. Although the winds have already moved through. Melbourne just a few minutes ago you had a wind gust of 53 miles an hour. So this is Melbourne and Palm Bay. 60% 
chance for rain and storms between now and 5 p.m. By 6 o'clock, we're down to 30 percent, and then we'll actually back it down after that. But there's more to come. Very rare. I talked all last week about this, so hopefully this didn't catch up on you. Uh, a rare July storm. This is an upper level storm that we generally don't see down here in the summer. This is normally something we might get in the winter, but not in the summer. It's way down here. And look at all this moisture that's picking up and moving it in our direction. So our wet weather checklist. We have a rare upper level storm. Pieces of energy break off and move overhead that generates rain, whether it's morning or afternoon. We have lots of moisture to work with. Humidity is high. And of course, our daily sea breezes. That normally does it right there, but we have all these other things that are in our favor. So, a rain chance still looks relatively high for at least the next couple of days, maybe three. Tonight, some isolated downpours still coming in off the Gulf of Mexico, but we'll start again early from the morning. Scatter showers and some thunderstorms through the afternoon. Wind gusts over 45, maybe 50 miles an hour. We'll keep close tabs on that. So, that's tomorrow. Still rain likely about a 60 to 70 percent rain chance. Wednesday, we're going to do it all over again. Looks like we'll finally start to quiet the weather pattern down a little bit back to normal quote as we head toward the end of the week five day forecast the weekend always in view showing temperatures uh, well into the upper 80s to near 90 degrees we'll keep that 70 percent rain chance for us tomorrow and wednesday still a 60 percent rain chance on thursday and keeping at least a 50 50 storm coverage what a wet season summer has been george all the way through early next week sure has been tom well some of you were upset when part of curry ford road was cut down to two lanes as part of a road study well the study's finished and ahead we're going to show you if this actually worked out or not and next what the coast guard is now revealing about the duck boat that sank in missouri killing 17 people and new for five a neighborhood feud over peacocks may have turned violent in orlando my neighbors say allegations of breeding may have driven someone to kill the birds power 95.3 It's a lot of bad things. Power 95.3. Why don't you just meet me in the middle? Two hours commercial free. At 1130, 430, and 830. Power 95.3. Save money, save time with easy checking from McCoy Federal. Get access to your account 24-7, online and on our mobile app. Plus, there's no minimum balance fee or monthly service fee. Make the easy choice with easy checking. Apply now at McCoyFCU.org. This is Orlando. This is where we believe in magic and fantasies and wishing upon stars and the power of the imagination. This is where we believe in dreams and seeing them come true. This is Orlando, known around the world as the home of happiness and to those who live here happily as home. This is more than just a place to stay a while. It's a place to stay on the cutting edge. Here, innovation comes in every form, entertainment in every variety, and thriving businesses in every size. So if you think you know all there is to know about Orlando, prepare to be surprised. Because until you get to really know this place, this community, and see all the reasons why it's so magical, rest assured, you don't know the half of it. We're on to you, corruption. Government waste, your time is up. And all you scams and rip-offs out there, your days are numbered. Because Nine Investigates is coming after you. Every day, we're exposing the lies, loopholes, and con artists trying to cheat us all. Nine Investigates, only on Channel 9 Eyewitness News. It's coverage you can count on. In the car, listen to News 96.5 WDBO, Orlando's latest breaking news, plus weather and traffic every six minutes in the morning. News 96.5 WDBO, where Orlando turns first for breaking news, weather, and traffic. Save money, save time with easy checking from McCoy Federal. Get access to your account 24-7, online and on our mobile app. Plus, there's no minimum balance fee or monthly service fee. Make the easy choice with easy checking. Apply now at McCoyFCU.org. 
Today, crews brought up this duck boat. This is the one that sank on that popular lake in Missouri, killing 17 people on board, including nine members of one family. It took several divers to do this, also a barge crane and water pumps to raise it from 80 feet below the surface. But this afternoon, as you see here, investigators are still trying to figure out why it actually went down. <laughs> from a wheelchair. Tia Coleman painfully remembered the boat ride that killed nine of her family members, including her husband and three children. And as I was swimming up, I was praying. I said, Lord, please let me get to my babies. I got to get to my babies. I got to get to my babies. And I was kicking in it. The harder I fought to get up to the top, I was getting pulled down. And I kept fighting and I kept fighting. And then I said, Lord, if I can't make it, there's no use in keeping me here. She says the tour was meant to create lasting memories. Instead, this picture is the last memory she has of her family just moments before getting on board. While sobbing, Coleman describing sinking underwater and the moment someone saved her life. Somehow I managed to get to the boat. These beautiful people, angels, I don't know who they were. They pulled me up. The area where the boat sank was under a severe thunderstorm warning at the time. And the storm that moved through generated near hurricane strength winds. The Coast Guard says the boat passed an annual inspection in February, adding the certificate of inspection placed limitations on when boats can enter the water based on wind speed and the height of waves. Now they're working to find out whether the boat violated those limitations and whether operators were adequately monitoring the weather. The Coast Guard is also looking into how information about the thunderstorm was relayed to the boat's crew. In the meantime, the duck boat is being taken to a secure facility where the NTSB will take it over and try to figure out exactly why it sank. But that story is just so heartbreaking. It is. Just every time I hear something about it, it just makes me feel worse. It sure does. All right, we have more news to get to here on a Monday. Investigators say a gunman is dead after shooting 14 innocent people on one of Toronto's busiest streets. Still ahead at four how eyewitnesses describe the moments before and after the gunfire. Plus, health care and education are the focus of this new ad in the governor's race. Coming up, the claims in it that just don't stand up to our truth test. And next right here, the emotional message loved ones have for the driver who hit and killed a man from Orlando in a suspected case of road rage. Soldiers in the Army National Guard live up to a set of time-honored principles. They stand ready to respond to any crisis. I'll never accept defeat. They serve in their communities as citizens and as soldiers. I'll never quit. They train part-time to be ready to serve at all times. I will never leave a fallen comrade. Learn more at NationalGuard.com. Families and fun, they just go together. Fun Spot's proud to be a partner of WFTV's Nine Family Connections. After all, Fun Spot is Orlando's hometown amusement park. Now that's huge. Do you know a local environmental volunteer? Someone who's preserving and improving the outdoor spaces we share? Whether picking up litter, planting a community garden, or restoring a shoreline, Nine Family Connection, our partners, and the Trust for Public Land want to recognize your hero. Nominate someone for the Cox Conserves Hero Award, and they could win $10,000 for their environmental nonprofit and compete for an additional $50,000. Nominate your hero now at ninefamily.com. Ooh, friendly, reliable, accessible, never overbearing, and knowledgeable. Oh. Hi, we're Frank. Welcome to Sun State Ford. I think I'm in the right place. Shop with Frank during our summer sales event. Drive this 2018 Focus SE for just $169 per month or 0% financing for 60 months or receive up to $4,000 cash back. Come find your match only at Sun State Ford. Storms here can move 65 miles an hour. I've covered tornadoes moving at almost 70. At Channel 9, we have the most advanced technology. We're looking for signs of spin, rotation, in case a tornado drops out. That's why we have the experienced team that we have. We want to give you the time frame of when the storm's going to hit. We can let you know where a storm's going to be, when it's going to be there, and what you need to know to stay safe. This is what we do. We take pride in this. I'm going to be here, and we're all going to be here, and that's coverage you can count on. Now you can get Channel 9 Eyewitness News updates on your Amazon Echo device. How cool is this? You ask a question, Alexa, what's in the news today? And it gives you an answer. 
Here's your flash briefing from WFTV in Orlando. Good morning, everyone. I'm Channel 9's Jamie Holmes. Today, the union's representing... To get news updates, open the Alexa app on your phone, search WFTV under Skills, then enable the flash briefing. Get breaking news and weather alerts and watch Channel 9 Eyewitness News live on your phone. Download the full list of Channel 9 apps for free. Central Florida's most watched news and weather. It's available right now in the App Store and on Google Play. Just search WFTV. This is Channel 9 Eyewitness News at 4. Coverage you can count on. You killed my dad. New at 4.30, heartbroken loved ones are looking for answers after a hit-and-run driver killed an Orlando man on the beach line in Brevard County. Roll concert. Troopers believe that crash stemmed from a case of road rage on Saturday that also injured a 26-year-old woman. And today, as Channel 9's Angela Jacobs checked in with more family and friends of the victim, she learned that survivor remains in critical condition. Angela, you're live at FHP headquarters right now because that's where troopers are expanding the search for that driver. And Vanessa, family members I spoke to are expressing a mix of emotions, as you can understand, from shock to grief to anger. And they are grateful, they say, for all the tips from the public that are coming in here. They hope that investigators can now field the one that leads to an arrest. This is not fair. Amber Roach couldn't hold back the tears as she spoke about the stepdad who raised her since she was four. 58-year-old Jeffrey Brookshire died Saturday in this wreckage along State Road 528 when troopers say a hit-and-run driver hit his Mustang from behind, forcing it head-on into an SUV. His 26-year-old passenger, Shannon Fisher, is in critical condition. I feel um, really hurt and really betrayed that... They don't have a conscience that you killed my dad. Anything. Witnesses reported the dark blue Mustang and a red passenger vehicle were traveling in eastbound lanes when they became involved in some type of road rage exchange. Today, troopers told us the search has intensified for the red car that hit the Mustang and took off. We would expect uh, one of the front corners of the red vehicle to have slight damage on it. It won't be heavy damage. But it'll have some damage from having contact with the, uh, the right rear of the uh, Mustang. About five miles from Amber's house. This is me, this is Jeff. We found this longtime friend of Brookshire's who showed us pictures she'd taken with him and other family members about 10 years ago. She just can't believe someone could drive away from a crash that killed another person. I hope they can find him. That was horrible. Who would do that? And investigators say the red vehicle they're looking for has a hammock hippie sticker on the back of it. It also has a specialty tag issued by the state of Florida. Coming up at 6, I'll tell you how that has narrowed the field of suspects for this case. Reporting live in Orlando, Angela Jacobs, Channel 9, Eyewitness News. Meanwhile, we're still pushing to learn more this afternoon about the murders of a mother and son at a Paramore apartment complex nearly a week ago now. Investigators found the bodies of 52-year-old Cynthia Strack and 22-year-old Sean Strack inside the apartment off West Jefferson Street last Wednesday. Police are not saying much about how they died or even why they died. They're asking anyone with information to come forward. A Brevard County man convicted of DUI manslaughter will learn his fate tomorrow. A jury found Cody Michael Gates guilty of driving drunk when his truck slammed into a cocoa building at about 120 miles an hour. That's the result two years ago. His passenger and best friend, Daryl Malo, was killed. Police determined that Gates' blood alcohol was nearly three times over the legal limit. He could face up to 15 years in prison. DeLand police believe they know who was behind a vehicle burglary spree that went on for months. Friday, 28-year-old Joseph Paul Evans was charged with 37 counts of burglary. He was already in the Volusia County Jail on other charges when the sheriff's office linked him to the stolen items. Investigators say Evans was recorded on surveillance cameras attempting a break-in during the 4th of July. There is a mystery in Miami Beach this afternoon surrounding a building collapse that left one person hurt. Now, the collapse happened this morning, and get this, the building was scheduled to be demolished and had a permit, but police say the demolition had not yet been authorized. Miami Beach firefighters initially reported several injuries, but police say as of right now, they can only confirm one, and that person's condition is unknown. 
Turning now to some major international news, a gunman opening fire on 14 innocent people up in Canada in Toronto, killing two of them, including a 10-year-old girl. That mass shooting happened last night on one of the city's busiest streets. The shooter was shot and killed by police, and now investigators are left to figure out how this happened and why. Just as families were sitting down to dinner are just walking along the street. There's multiple victims, and the suspect that's fleeing uh, looks like possibly still shooting. A gunman armed with a handgun fired off round after round. I just saw bodies going down and I just got shoved to the ground. Did he ever aim at you? No, I don't know. I was a blur. The gunman fired straight into a crowd. Shocking. Absolutely shocking. I mean, this is a street where people walk every day. Police arrived on the scene and fired back. In the shootout, the suspect was killed, but not before 14 people were shot. One woman run and she fell and he went over her and shot her twice. And, uh, point blank. Police say they are still searching for a motive and have not ruled out terrorism. It's way too early to rule out anything. Absolutely everything is open right now. As investigators search for answers, Parliament held a moment of silence for the victims. Ask the house now to rise to observe a moment of silence. While lawmakers in Toronto are already calling for action. I've said for some time that the city has a gun problem in that guns are far too readily available to far too many people. It was a gun-related shooting. I think it's time to step up again. Just last week, that city rolled out a program to put 200 more officers on the streets. Because of an uptick in gun and gang violence, there have been 200 shootings in Toronto this year so far. The man accused in another mass shooting inside a Maryland newsroom has been indicted. 38-year-old Jared Ramos was indicted on Friday on 23 charges, including five counts of murder. Ramos is accused of walking into the Capitol Gazette building on June 28th and opening fire, killing five people and injuring several more. The violence came after a lengthy legal battle between Ramos and that paper. This afternoon, President Trump's national security advisor, John Bolton, is echoing the president's latest Twitter battle. It began after Secretary of State Mike Pompeo delivered a tough speech likening Iranian clerics to the mafia on Sunday. In response, the Iranian president tweeted, quote, America must understand well that peace with Iran is the mother or all peace and war with Iran is the mother of all wars. President Trump responded with a tweet promising great consequences if Iran continued to threaten the U.S. The rhetoric resembles the president's initial exchanges with North Korea. And staying in Washington, President Trump is also pushing back against the Russian investigation this afternoon, claiming it's politically motivated. The comments come after newly released documents show the FBI wiretapped former foreign policy advisor Carter Page a month before the 2016 election. The feds claimed Page had collaborated and conspired with the Russian government. Page calls the accusations ridiculous. I've never been an agent of the foreign pol uh, power in any, by any stretch of the imagination. Some lawmakers say the document dump proves intelligence agencies were targeting the Trump campaign, while others argue that the surveillance was warranted due to Page's connections with Russia. U.S. immigration officials are facing yet another deadline this week to reunite families separated at the border. A federal judge says the government must reunite more than 2,500 children five years old and older by Thursday. Just last week, immigration officials said they had only reunited 14 percent of those children with their parents. Health care is another issue at the top of the list for Democrats this year. With premiums growing and coverage shrinking, candidates are jumping on the message. And now a new ad from gubernatorial candidate Gwen Graham targets the state for its poor record on providing health. And Channel Line's Christopher Heath put the ad to the truth test to separate fact from fiction. For 20 years, the Republican Party has been in total control. The opening statement from Democrat Gwen Graham seems to set the stage for the rest of the ad, but then a pivot. It's these high-paid lobbyists that are in charge in Tallahassee. However, the people in this picture aren't lobbyists, they're legislators. Still, Graham makes her case. They have not taken Medicaid expansion. They have hurt education. While it's true state leaders have repeatedly rejected health care expansion, whether or not they've hurt education is more of an issue of perspective, but are Republicans solely to blame? Voters have elected majorities of Republicans, and so 
you, you get the policy consequences of that. The UCF political science professor Dr. Aubrey Jewett points out it's Florida voters picking Republicans and have put them in power. But in the ad, Graham says it's time for a change, and here is what she's proposing. Graham says stand up to the corporate special interests, put health care schools and people first again. Graham could certainly make this a focus, but curtailing lobbying, that's another issue. If Democrats were to take over the state legislature, and particularly if, if Gwen Graham was to, to win as governor, you'd still have lobbyists up there. There's a lot of lobbyist influence, but it would be a different set of lobbyists. Overall, we rate this ad half true. There are goals that Graham can follow, but changing Tallahassee or a legislature of the opposite party won't be so easy. Christopher Heath, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. Well, Christopher Heath has put several other campaign ads to the truth test here on Eyewitness News. If you missed them, you'd like to see what he found, go to WFTV.com slash politics. They're going to be there for you. A reminder this afternoon for you, for voters across Central Florida, you must be registered as a member of a major political party if you want to vote in the, bi in the partisan primary elections next month. Florida is a closed primary state, which blocks voters registered as independents, let's say, from casting ballots in the primaries. Registered Republican and Democrat Democratic voters will narrow the field in the races for U.S. Senate and state governor and several other roles on August 28th. The makers of Ritz crackers are pulling more than a dozen products off store shelves because of a risk of salmonella. The company says 16 varieties of Ritz crackers and Ritz bits contain a whey powder that could be contaminated. The powder is a food additive that comes from milk. So far, there are no reports that anyone got sick. To learn more about this recall, go to WFTV.com slash web links. The Trump administration is proposing changes to the Endangered Species Act. The president's plan would end automatic protection for animals considered threatened, but not yet endangered. It would also make it harder to list new species as endangered. Some conservationists fear the changes could hurt endangered species even more. Every threatened species moving forward will receive just the bare minimum of protections. Republican lawmakers say the current protections restrict economic development. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service adds that the regulations as they stand right now are too confusing. If you're streaming on Netflix or Hulu, lawmakers are worried you won't get storm warnings and other alerts that you would normally see if you were watching regular television. Yes, that's a problem, and we found out the changes they're now considering to protect you and your family. Interesting, right now we've got some big storms on the south side and approaching Cocoa Beach and Brevard County, plus I'm updating the timing of more stormy weather on the way. And drivers, neighbors, and business owners didn't like when part of Curry Ford Road was shrunk for that road study. Well, next, why the whole project was more successful than people expected. All right, speaking of, let's see how were stocks. They were mixed on Wall Street on this Monday. Investments, though, were helped by a positive earnings report from Google's parent company, Alphabet. Here's a look at the final numbers. At Channel 9 Eyewitness News, we know you need more than just a five-day forecast. That's why we use the tools here in Severe Weather Center 9 to break down the science behind your weather. We take you beyond the numbers to focus on how weather impacts your life, giving you a first-hand perspective so you'll always have the full story. Every day, every newscast. Channel 9 Eyewitness News is weather coverage you can count on. Don't miss the golden opportunity sales event going strong right now at Lexus of Winter Park with incredible savings on luxury. Like a 2018 IS300, finance rates as low as 2.9% and we never charge a dealer fee. Visit LexusofWinterPark.com. At American Air and Heat, quality is our specialty. It's who we are and it's what we do. We are a family-owned business with over 30 years of experience behind us, a team of over 20 trained service technicians, and a family of customer service specialists. Our team here at American Air and Heat is dedicated to providing you with 100% customer satisfaction. Whether you need repair, tune-up, or replacement system, our experts have the know-how and expertise to help. At American Air and Heat, we know the importance of a properly functioning AC unit. That's why we offer our 24-point preventative maintenance and tune-up to help you avoid expensive and inconvenient breakdowns. With 24-7 emergency service without any after-hour fees, you can rest easy knowing that our team is here to help. We offer our exclusive $500 best value guarantee and 0% financing on all system repairs and replacements. Schedule your next maintenance visit at AmericanAirAndHeat.com and enjoy your AC with confidence. While lots changed since 1986, our mission remains the same, providing one of the best air conditioning services and products in Central Florida. Family-friendly service, that's American Air and Heat. 
free savings, free gifts, you get it all during Mattress One's incredible tax-free mattress sale. And now you can experience life-changing sleep on a Tempur-Pedic for as little as $33 a month. Mattress One is Florida's largest Tempur-Pedic retailer with the largest selection of Tempur-Pedic models to choose from in stock with free delivery and setup. Get a Tempur-Pedic for just $33 a month plus free gifts and 0% APR for five years with equal payments. Visit MattressOne.com to find a store near you. This is Orlando. This is where we believe in magic and fantasies and wishing upon stars and the power of the imagination. This is where we dream, where we think smarter and play harder. So if you think you know all there is to know about Orlando, you're in for a big surprise. Because until you join our community and see all the reasons we're amazing, you don't know the half of it. Don't miss a moment. I got irritable bowel syndrome. And you thought light gray suit was a good <laughs> idea. <laughs> on Family Feud. Tonight at 7 on TV 27. Don't miss the Golden Opportunity Sales Event right now at Lexus of Winter Park. Drive a 2018 IS300 for only $2.99 a month. Visit us today at 436 in University or at LexusofWinterPark.com. A new report shows the road project that shrunk Curry Ford Road did exactly what it was supposed to. Yeah, in fact, speeding went down, more bikers and walkers used the road. You may remember when the travel lanes were temporarily closed on Curry Ford Road between Bumby Avenue and Crystal Lake Drive in April. Channel 9's traffic anchor Raquel Asa found out the test was not without its difficulties, too. Driving on Curry Ford Road now, there's barely a trace of the test that was conducted here in April. You might not find the markings on the road that helped shrink it for a month, but you can find those who remember it. it. I thought it was complete insanity. So. Jason King had people signing a petition in his business against the project when it was happening. I would sit here and watch people, and they would just be backed up. This new report released by the city of Orlando on the temporary road project reveals it did exactly what transportation officials had hoped. Biking and walking increased by 50 and 38% while speeding decreased by 53%. The city's biggest takeaway? Have future tests last longer. We would like to do a project like this for six months because we know that driver behavior and pedestrian behavior and bike behavior is going to change over time. That's not the news some want to hear. Drive times reached up to an extra six minutes for drivers. Some people found other ways around it. Grant Street, for instance, saw an extra 500 cars a day. It deters people away from our storefronts. And while Curry Ford Road was temporary, permanent road shrinking is is coming in another part of the city. The city is working with FDOT to shrink Robinson Street between Huey and McGuire in 2022. We will definitely use what we learned from this project, especially once we get into the design phase. The full report on Curry Ford Road will be presented to the community at a meeting next month on August 14th at the Dover Shores Community Center. Reporting along Curry Ford Road, Raquel Asa, Channel 9, Eyewitness News. The report also said it received roughly 200 emails about the project with mixed reviews. It's important to note most of the traffic complaints came from those who did not live in the area and were using the road as a cut through. Orange County Public Schools is offering a free immunization event to prepare kids for the upcoming school year, which is less than a month away. The free event is going on all week at the Orange County Public Schools Academic Center for Excellence. Now, this event runs through Saturday. It's open from 8 in the morning until 3 in the afternoon, and then from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Sunday. By the way, school starts in Orange County August 13th. Oh. With the school year quickly approaching, it's also time for Nine Family Connection to partner with Hope Now for the annual Back to School Bash. We're looking for sponsors for students in need and volunteers to help at the big event, which will be Sunday, July 29th at the Amway Center. You can learn more at NineFamily.com. He's a Florida boy who could do simple math by age one and algebra by age four. Now at 11, he's a member of the 2018 graduating class at St. Petersburg College. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Check him out. He's 11 years old. He earned his associate's degree over the weekend. He'll now attend the University of South Florida. He says his goal is to make a lasting mark on the world, I think he already has, and achieve something no one else has. I want to prove to the world that God does exist through science. 
All right, then. Welcome. He started college in 2016 after graduating high school at the age of nine. His goal is to complete his doctorate by the time he's 18, and he's well on his way. I mean, no kidding. Just a, a lofty goal, by the way, proving the existence of How God through science. That yeah, makes it a little party every now and then. <laughs> Something. All right. He's not old he's enough. He's ambitious. For that. <laughs> How about a cake and ice cream? Party? Yeah, that works. Start there. Here's what's going on right now. He's had a lot to uh, be successful with so far. 78 with rain cooled air at uh, Daytona. On the beach. We're still waiting for uh, the executive airport to cool down. We had some showers earlier today. We cooled down 10 degrees over in Cocoa, and it's wet. It's another day here in paradise. Right now, storms are moving off the coast. Still have a little more to come later on tonight, which we'll time out with future track. Want to take you in close, though. Some heavier thunderstorms right near the National Gardens and Mound Grove, getting some strong gusty winds that precede the rain. So that's Mother Nature's uh, uh, alarm bell saying, hey, need to get inside. The winds pick up. You'll hear that distant rumble of thunder. Usually nature gives you advance warning, but always download our free weather app. It'll let you know when lightning or heavy rain are coming towards your location. This is a big thunderstorm right now over Rockledge, right on top of Cocoa, across the bridge over toward Cocoa Beach. 111 lightning strikes in the last 20 minutes, and so that's still slowly moving in towards Satellite Beach, right over Pineda and into Palm Shores, and again, right on top of Vieira, just there on the west side of 95. For Osceola County, you've already seen most of your rain, just an isolated shower through 7 p.m tonight. Future track keeping the storms moving along. Here's a little bit of rain for you in our southern zones here after 11 o'clock tonight. As we talked about in the last half hour, we have a storm system in the Gulf. This is going to spit out little pieces of energy. So anywhere from late morning all the way through late tomorrow night, we'll have kind of areas of rain, showers, thunderstorms. Temperatures a little bit cooler, still keeping some isolated downpours. Overall, about 70% of you watching here in Central Florida will get measurable rain. 70% or maybe higher. So that's why I have a 70% rain chance coming up. Wednesday, more of the same as those storms come on by. If you're heading over to the beaches, again, make sure you are weather aware because things are moving in fast. Scattered to likely storms late in the day tomorrow and again on Wednesday. And I'm going to go more into detail here in the next half hour of why things are so out of whack because they're going to stay that way for the next three days at least. Five-day forecast, weekend always in view. 70% rain chance, in other words, likely after Afternoon rain Tuesday, Wednesday, and still looking at some at least widely scattered to scattered afternoon storms uh, by uh, the upcoming weekend. Vanessa? Some Brevard County residents are not taking any chances following a rabies alert. Because if you're working out in the yard and the cat comes along, she bites you, what are you going to do? New at 5, how this woman is protecting herself after she spotted a cat with rabies in her front yard. Plus, should future moms in Orlando be booking doctors? ahead of time at 5. Why the experts say the city beautiful is on the verge of an OBGYN shortage. And next at 4, the changes U.S. Senators are now looking into to make sure that people get critical storm warnings and other alerts when they're streaming on Netflix. Soldiers in the Army National Guard live up to a set of time-honored principles. They stand ready to respond to any crisis. They serve in their communities as citizens and as soldiers. They train part-time to be ready to serve at all times. Learn more at NationalGuard.com. Hi, welcome to Sun State Ford. I'm Frank. Friendly, reliable, accessible, never overbearing, and knowledgeable. Hi, Frank. I'm so glad to see you. I just came from the other place. Hey, I'm Pat. Physical, aggressive, and territorial. Uh, we have coupons. Yeah, Frank is better. Shop with Frank during our summer sales event. Drive this 2018 Ford Escape SE for $209 per month or 0% financing for 72 months or receive up to $3,000 cash back. Stick with Frank at Sun State Ford. No closing costs, no lender fees, no PMI, know your options. When it comes to getting a mortgage, you have more options than you think. For instance, you can look at the lowest rates available with and without closing costs. I am Sharam Sandi, president of Florida Home Funding. I will personally guide you in exploring all the options that could save you thousands of dollars. If you have mortgage questions and need straightforward answers, call me today. What is ICFlorida.com? It gives us great insider information of what's going on locally. If I go to the IC Florida app, it's easy for me to see what's new and what's hot. If SD is there, 
you're there. there. And SD is everywhere. Having the food critic on here, Scott Joseph, definitely helps to see what's good, what's not. It makes you feel like you're part of this town, so why not? I see Florida, go local, go fun! Go inside Central Florida with icflorida.com, brought to you by Daytona Beach. When weather is at its worst, count on the team in Severe Weather Center 9. Alerting you first when storms move in. Keeping you connected when it matters most. The tools you need to track weather where you live. With insight from Chief Meteorologist Tom Terry and the experts who know Central Florida. Any screen, anywhere, so you're informed when it matters most. Severe Weather Center 9. Coverage you can count on. A flash flood warning is now in effect for Tallahassee, Florida. Keeping a NOAA radio in your home will alert you of any dangerous weather in the area. In the event of a flash flood, be prepared to evacuate to a safe location. Secure all important documents and belongings and avoid areas subject to flooding. Follow your pre-planned evacuation route and never drive through flooded roadways. Keep you and your family safe. Get a plan. Local weather coverage worth staying up for every night at 11. Millions of us use streaming services like Netflix and Hulu to watch TV shows and movies and Spotify to listen to music. But U.S. Senators are worried that you won't get storm warnings and other emergency alerts that you normally see on television or hear on the radio. Channel 9's Justin Gray is live in Washington. Justin, the rise of streaming services has lawmakers looking for new ways to reach out in an emergency. Well, the fact is a lot of us just aren't watching traditional TV all the time the way we used to, but the emergency alerts, they haven't kept up with changing technology. On TV or on the radio, the familiar alert for decades has been used to save lives in an emergency. But if you're binging on Netflix on the couch or playing Spotify in the car instead of turning on the radio, you may not hear that emergency alert. Any way that, um, you know, citizens, civilians could know about a potential threat, is so critical. A bipartisan bill introduced in the U.S. Senate would explore adding emergency alerts to streaming services. It would also prevent you from opting out or turning off alerts on your mobile phone. Senator Brian Schatz says the idea for the bill came after the missile alert in Hawaii earlier this year, where many people never knew there was a potential emergency. Quote, even though it was a false alarm, the missile alert exposed real flaws in the way people receive emergency alerts. Public safety experts like Heather Cotter from the International Public Safety Association say expanding the alerts is a good idea. Any type of communication that we could have that gets these alerts out to the community is important. The FCC tells us it's already making efforts to modernize emergency alerts by creating better targeted wireless alerts with more information. We reached out to Netflix. They had no comment on the bill. The bill also has provisions to better track and prevent mistakes or false alarms, like with that warning for a missile in Hawaii earlier this year. Reporting live in Washington, Justin Gray, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. Next at 5, police arrested two people they say opened fire during a chase in the middle of Alafaya Trail. We're digging into the teens' backgrounds, and it isn't the first visit to jail for either of them. A battle over birds. Why these peacocks are the at the center of a major fight between neighbors in Orlando. And only on 9, hear from the victim of a violent carjacking. No, that was my first reaction, you know, to go after the guys, but, you know, I, I don't know if that was right or not. What he did after those suspects opened fire. Tax free savings, free gifts, you get it all during Mattress One's incredible tax free mattress sale. Buy a Sealy mattress, just $2.99. Free. Buy a Sealy Queen 8 inch memory foam mattress, only $3.99. Tax free. We have it in stock so you can take it home today. Plus, enjoy free gifts and 0% APR for five years with equal payments. You get the mattress, you get the savings. We take care of the sales tax. Visit mattressone.com to find a store near you. This is Orlando. This is where we believe in magic and fantasies and wishing upon stars and the power of the imagination. This is where we believe in dreams and seeing them come true. This is Orlando, known around the world as the home of happiness and to those who live here happily as home. This is more than just a place to stay a while. It's a place to stay on the cutting edge. Here, 
Innovation comes in every form. Entertainment in every variety. And thriving businesses in every size. So if you think you know all there is to know about Orlando, prepare to be surprised. Because until you get to really know this place, this community, and see all the reasons why it's so magical, rest assured, you don't know the half of it. We live with such a, a unique climate here in Central Florida, and we know that storms can turn severe in a moment's notice. A million-watt radar can keep you ahead of that storm. We can give you earlier warning when a storm happens. We can track these storms right down to street level, and we have all the tools here in Severe Weather Center 9 to keep you safe. It's more than just all the data. We have great data, but it comes down to, I think, the experience that we have. So no matter what does happen with that storm, we're going to be here for you. That's our promise. This is Channel 9 Eyewitness News at 5. Coverage you can count on. Only Channel 9 spoke to a man who confronted two car thieves right outside his home. I chased them. What he did after those suspects opened fire at him. The driver says he's not sure whether he should have chased the people who had his car, but he did. And nearly got shot. Good evening. I'm Martha Sigalski. I'm George Estevez. Only Channel 9's Field Sutton tracked him down today. His car was stolen near Curry Ford and Semeron. Police spotted the suspects and then chased them until they crashed at OBT and Oak Ridge. Field, you're the one who told them where that actual car was. And I'll tell you, he was stunned to hear how all of this played out. Meanwhile, I've been hanging out here on OBT near Florida Mall to try to find out exactly what happened with this investigation as it continued. Turns out, just in the last 10 minutes, I have confirmed with police they arrested an 18-year-old, a 19-year-old, and a 20-year-old, all found in that car when it crashed right here in this driveway and all charged with armed carjacking. The people driving an Orlando man's stolen car got broadsided around noon today, running from the cops. Clipped him, spun around, tried to get control, couldn't make it. And the next thing I know, Orange County went on top of him like that. The man who watched it all play out told me all three people in the car were, at the very least, dazed and confused when they got taken into custody. That was about eight hours after the victim walked out of his front door to see them speeding off in his car. I chased them, and I, and I, and I, um... I stand on, on, on the front of the car and I tell them that, you know, the stop, the stop you know, the, the, you know they, they need to get out. In the pre-dawn darkness, he says he could see the gun come out clear as day. The driver first firing at his victim and then into the house where his family was sleeping. They shoot again, and, and, and if you see, um, it's a bullet on top. For them to shoot into your home, I mean, that's bold. Yeah, yes, yes, it is, it is. I mean, I, w I, was, I was scared. Orlando police told me all three people in the car are in major trouble for the car chase alone. They're still trying to tie them to the original theft and perhaps a string of burglaries stretching across that neighborhood. Living now in Orlando for the past six, seven years, I never thought that, you know, the crime rate was going to go up, but guess what? It did. Neighbors here say those crime stats matter a lot more when they land in your driveway. You'll notice that we hid that victim's face. He is concerned about his safety and after everything that happened, understandably, understandably so. He and his family are all fine tonight. So are the two people, the innocent people who were driving another car that hit the stolen one out there in the intersection. They ended up parked right here uh, for a couple hours today. I talked to them as well. They told me they just still weren't sure exactly how all of this had played out or how they got involved. Talk about a crazy story. Live in Orange County, Field Sutton, Channel 9, Eyewitness News. Definitely a crazy story, Field. Thank you. Meanwhile, new at five, two teenagers are now in jail, arrested for a violent shootout and chase on a busy road in Orlando. And we told you last week when a man was killed along Alafaya Trail and hit by a car full of innocent bystanders. Channel 9's Steve Barrett spent the day looking into their backgrounds, and Steve, police didn't have to go too far to arrest them. Uh, family members tell me that uh, these two teens turned themselves in. The sheriff's office did confirm that, Martha. Um, but uh, these, uh, we still don't have answers from the sheriff's office yet about why this shootout was happening right there where so many people could have been injured. In any case, they were booked into the jail just before noon today, but we learned it's not the first time either of them have been in jail. The Orange County Sheriff's Office announced the arrests of Andreas Lee and Maurice Smith today, both 19 years old. 
They're charged in last week's shootout near the UCF campus. The Jeep the victims were in was left riddled with bullet holes and smashed into another SUV. Detectives searched all weekend for the gunman who fled in a white Nissan Altima. This afternoon, we checked and found that both Smith and Lee have prior criminal records. Lee has faced drug and resisting arrest charges. Smith has been arrested seven times for armed robbery, drug possession, auto theft, and more. This time, both teens face first-degree murder charges and attempted murder charges. Jonathan Bryant was killed in the shooting, and Robert Ash tried to flee, according to the sheriff's office. He was arrested on an unrelated warrant. The shootout happened on crowded roadways on Thursday. It ended with a crash on North Alafaya Trail. And both of these teens right now, they're being held without bond here at the sheriff's office. We expect them to uh, be in a courtroom tomorrow for the first time. Meanwhile, we know that there is some video from a trooper's car of some of this actually happening, but that video has not been released yet. Reporting live in Orange County, Steve Barrett, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. Osceola County detectives have made an arrest in a double murder in Kissimmee. We broke the news on WFTV.com this afternoon that Federico Gondola was arrested yesterday. We uncovered documents that show he killed that elderly couple during an extortion plot. Their bodies were discovered one week ago. Coming up on Eyewitness News at 6, we're going to have more on the police tip that led them to that suspect. We now know the name of a man hit by a tree that fell during severe weather yesterday. Ormond Beach police say 56-year-old Benjamin Allen is in critical condition right now after a tree fell on him in his driveway. One other person suffered minor injuries. His next-door neighbors found him and called 911. Next week, family members and victims of the Pulse nightclub terror attack will be back in court. Groups have filed two civil rights lawsuits in federal court. They claim misconduct by law enforcement at the hearing. The judge will discuss the possibility of combining the two cases and set a timetable for them. Meanwhile, the One Pulse Foundation is working on a permanent memorial to the 49 victims. This is video of the current interim memorial. They're asking you to contribute. Any ideas you have, right there on their website. We put a link for you on our website. Just head to WFTV.com slash weblinks. Severe weather here and across the southeast is having a major impact at Orlando International. Early this afternoon, the airport showed that 31 flights were canceled today and 25 more were delayed. You can check the status of your flight by going to WFTV.com. Orlando city leaders say undocumented immigrants who are afraid of the police are less likely to come forward then if they're victims or if they have information that could help solve a case. That's why commissioners passed a new policy banning police and city workers from asking about someone's immigration status. Channel 9 Sierra Putman live in Orlando and Sierra. Part of that policy could put some undocumented victims on a path towards citizenship. Them, but some because the policy says police will fill out this visa application form but it's only for victims of serious crimes like human trafficking and domestic violence. In a unanimous vote, Orlando commissioners agreed to expand the police department's Fair Treatment of All, or Trust Act policy. The goal? Encourage undocumented immigrants to report crimes. Now all city workers, including police, will not be allowed to detain or question someone about their immigration status. Do you think this change is going to make Orlando a sanctuary city? Absolutely not. This is, this, is not, this is about making Orlando the diverse city that we are. We will continue cooperating with the federal government, but when it comes to the local issues, we need to make sure that our citizens feel safe and secure in the city of Orlando. The policy says Orlando will follow state and federal laws. It also says Orlando police will fill out this U visa certification form for victims of domestic violence, sexual assault, human trafficking, and other crimes. There are police departments that completely do not provide the certification as a matter of of policy. Ingrid Morfa says she mainly handles domestic violence cases involving undocumented immigrants. Applicants need the form to apply for the U visa. Some immigrants may even gain citizenship. Just this year, Orlando police received 10 U visa certification requests and signed six forms. The five years before that, it received 80 requests and signed 34, less than half of all requests. If they know there will be relief and that the police department is open to them, they're more likely to report. Now, getting that form filled out is just part of the visa process, and victims will also have to help out police complete their case. Reporting live in Orlando, Sierra Putman, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. 
A Polk County deputy is recovering after being hit during a traffic stop. These are pictures from the scene Sunday night. Investigators say the deputy was conducting a traffic stop in North Lakeland when the suspect hit the deputy with his car and then took off. After a chase on I-4, the suspect ran his car off Berkeley Road and then jumped out and opened fire, in fact. Deputies say that's when they started shooting. No deputies were hurt. The suspect was taken to a hospital. A former Kissimmee mental health counselor who is also a priest will face a judge tomorrow. Gerardo de Jesus is accused of inappropriately touching and kissing a female patient who was seeking treatment for depression and PTSD. Tomorrow is de Jesus' last court date before his trial. That trial has already been delayed three times. After his arrest, de Jesus was suspended from the Behavioral Health Center where he was practicing and the Episcopal Diocese of Central Florida says he can't practice as a priest in any capacity pending an outcome in the case. A nonprofit group has opened a new center designed to help the chronically homeless. These are pictures of a new transitional housing facility for the neighborhood center of West Volusia and Deland. Men can stay in the center for up to a year while they work and save money to get a place of their own. This facility adds another 12 beds, making a total of 162 for emergency and short-term housing. Meanwhile, the city of Daytona Beach still working to build its first homeless shelter. City officials told Channel 9 the design plans for the 100-bed shelter off Red John Road would be 100% finished by now. We're checking with the city to see if it is. The city has been trying to build a shelter since 2016 when the homeless camped outside the county administration building. In Lake County, plans to expand the villages are getting pushed back. Last year, the city of Leesburg voted to sell about 2,000 acres to the villages to expand the retirement community near the Turnpike and County Road 470. Well, in May, Leesburg city leaders updated that to sell about 1,100 acres. And in about 30 minutes, the city council is expected to ask for more time before the deal moves forward. The Florida Department of Transportation holding a hearing ahead of some major changes on the Merritt Island Causeway. We're talking about the part of the causeway between Newfoundland Harbor Drive and South Banana River Drive. Officials want to add a raised median in the current left-hand turn lane. The meeting is tomorrow at the Kiwanis Island Park Community Center. At 5.30. So, Dinky Beach in Winter Park is back open for swimming. Last week, we told you the beach was once again closed until further notice because of high levels of bacteria. In May, we told you about a similar issue on that beach off Lake Virginia. The city continued to test the area until results showed normal levels of bacteria again. A stolen Tavares police rifle is now back where it belongs after more than one year in the wrong hands. Next to five, the changes in the department after the weapon was stolen from a police cruiser. And also next, a pack of peacocks wreaking havoc in a neighborhood in Orlando. Every morning at 4.30, it sounds like somebody's strangling a baby outside your bedroom window. What some neighbors say they've done to try to get the city to intervene. Well, it's still raining in Cocoa Beach. I'm updating the latest radar and tracking more downpours for later tonight with Future Track. This is Orlando. This is where we believe in magic and fantasies and wishing upon stars and the power of the imagination. This is where we dream, where we think smarter and play harder. So if you think you know all there is to know about Orlando, you're in for a big surprise. Because until you join our community and see all the reasons we're amazing, you don't know the half of it. It's the Golden Opportunity Sales event right now at the all-new Lexus of Orlando. Drive a 2018 RX350, only $4.29 a month. Visit us today online at LexusOfOrlando.com. That's LexusOfOrlando.com. American Air and Heat and Linux are available when your home's AC system unfortunately breaks. With complete system diagnosis available day or night for only $90. We want to fix your system as bad as you want it fixed. Family-friendly service, that's American Air and Heat. Hi, I'm Jennifer Martinez Gibson, and while I'm not an attorney, I am married to one, Michael T. Gibson. Working on serious accident cases, Mike has learned what a privilege and a blessing it is to come home to a loving family. If you're hurt in an accident, just know that my firm and my family are here for you. The Central Florida Auto Dealers Association has been making an impact in Central Florida since 1929. Together with our members, we increase awareness of automotive careers and educational programs. To learn more, visit us at cfada.org. 
tax-free savings, free gifts, you get it all during Mattress One's incredible tax-free mattress sale. And now you can experience life-changing sleep on a Tempur-Pedic for as little as $33 a month. Mattress One is Florida's largest Tempur-Pedic retailer with the largest selection of Tempur-Pedic models to choose from in stock with free delivery and setup. Get a Tempur-Pedic for just $33 a month plus free gifts and 0% APR for five years with equal payments. Visit MattressOne.com to find a store near you. Get breaking news and weather alerts and watch Channel 9 Eyewitness News live on your phone. Download the full list of Channel 9 apps for free. Central Florida's most watched news and weather. It's available right now in the App Store and on Google Play. Just search WFTV. Soldiers in the Army National Guard live up to a set of time-honored principles. They stand ready to respond to any crisis. They serve in their communities as citizens and as soldiers. They train part-time to be ready to serve at all times. Learn more at NationalGuard.com. Hurry to the Golden Opportunity Sales Event right now at the all-new Lexus of Orlando. Drive a 2018 RX 350, finance rates as low as 2.9%, and we never charge a dealer fee. Visit us online at LexusofOrlando.com. Covering Orlando's biggest stories, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. All right, new at 5, there is a peacock property war near downtown Orlando. We're up to... 30 of these guys and girls roam free, and residents believe actually someone killed five of the birds with either fireworks or a flare yeah. gun, George. Awful. They're gorgeous, Martha, but they do wreak some havoc up there. Channel 9's Lauren Seabrook joining us live now on Bumby near Chelsea. Lauren, some people around there love the birds, obviously, and others, though, say they need to go. And George, we have seen a ton of them and heard them while we've been out here today. Unfortunately, I think they may be a little camera shy. They're not coming out for live TV, of course, right now. But some of the neighbors tell us they are very frustrated with the sound they make. And also they worry about this street right here. They worry they could cause an accident. And that's why that sign is up right there. But others' neighbors say they really compliment this area and they want to find a peaceful solution so no more peacocks have to die. A battle over birds is brewing in Colonial Town, and it might have led to the death of five peacocks. The neighborhood is just outraged. The birds often back up traffic on Bumby when drivers halt for a photo or just stop to avoid hitting them. But they're really ruffling the feathers of some people who live here. Dennis Delia says he's had up to 30 in his trees at night. Every morning at 4.30, it sounds like somebody's strangling a baby outside your bedroom window. He says his neighbor is breeding them, and many are fed up. He sells the feathers. He sells the eggs. But neighbors like Mary Alexander enjoy seeing them walking around. A lot of people really care about them, and they love them, and they're, they're beautiful, and they're, they're exotic, and they deserve to, you know, they deserve to be there. She and others were devastated to hear someone may have killed five of them using fireworks or a flare gun. He had stopped me and said, um, did you hear the banging the other night? I had, we had, we had five peacocks that were shot out of the tree. Dennis says he doesn't want anyone to hurt the animals, but he and other neighbors told us they're not surprised it happened. We stopped by the man's home, decorated with feathers and signs, to get his side of the peacock fight, but no one answered. The city of Orlando says there's no ordinance protecting peafowl or regulating their existence in city limits. Now, I asked the city if there are consequences for killing peacocks. A spokesperson told me the manner of death would have to be investigated and a police report. There actually was not a police report filed in this situation. We also want to add that we have not seen any physical evidence that these peacocks were killed. Reporting live in Orlando, Lauren Seabrook, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. A Bethune-Cookman University student will pursue his master's with the help of Beyonce. We told you in April when the singer announced she'd be giving $100,000 to four historically black colleges, including Bethune-Cookman University. Demetrius Weaver, a graduate student pursuing a master's degree in criminal justice, was awarded the $25,000 prize. He's officially a member of the Beehive now. There you go. <laughs> FEMA says now is the time to get flood insurance before another storm like Hurricane Irma hit Central Florida. The agency says last year only half of Florida residents in high-risk flood zones had insurance, and 30% of its claims came from low to moderate risk areas. The average Irma-related claim paid out $50,000. It takes 30 days, though, for flood insurance to kick in, and if a name storm develops, it won't be possible to add insurance 
until after it hits. And Tom, you always say that. Do it now. Do it early. Don't wait. Well, flood warning remains in effect until Wednesday for parts of Seminole County along the St. Johns River. Additional heavy rainfall over the weekend caused the river to rise back into minor flood stage near Astor. Today in Geneva, residents who live on Lake Harney told us the water has fallen about a foot, but says it's relatively high for this time of year. If it goes down, it's not going to go down much this entire uh, rainy season. Mm -hmm. And if we get a hurricane, of course, um, you know, between the water and, and the wind, we're going to be in big trouble. He also says that in the last eight or nine years since he's moved there, he's only seen the water this high after a hurricane. That's right. And you were crunching some numbers last week, too, of, that, of the rainfall we've had this summer. I've got all kinds of stuff coming up for our next half hour. Okay. And we're going to talk about how excessively wet this whole summer's been, and then we're going to get into the river level. So if you are concerned about that, we'll have details. That, that's a 545. Let me show you what, why we still have rain to track, the showers that were still ongoing in Cocoa Beach, where we have 77 degrees, although some sun is starting to come back out, our Florida sun shower. Uh, right now, we still have some rain along the coast. Yes, we added more water to the St. John's Basin, which starts over here and then flows north, of course, to Jacksonville. And we still have some pretty good downpours moving through Melbourne, had wind gusts over 50 miles an hour in Melbourne, preceding these downpours as the gusts of winds just kind of blow out well ahead of the rain and lightning. Here's some shower activity near DeLand over by Daytona Park Estates, and we're still getting some showers moving toward and right through the villages. No lightning with that, but still some moderate rain approaching Leesburg as well. And you can kind of pick them out. Here's one, here's another one. There's some more back out here. There's an upper level storm system that's swirling around up here to the north. We had a similar type pattern way back in May when we started the wet season about two weeks early, only it was sitting about right here. Pieces of energy break off and just develop rain. It can happen at night. It can happen during the afternoon hours when it normally does. It just doesn't matter. So that's one of the things we're looking at. This is tonight, 11 o'clock, scattered showers, and then we get a little bit of a break. The future track has more rain in the morning and the early to mid-afternoon. A good 70% chance that someone in this area, 70% coverage tomorrow. So most most of you will at least get some rainfall at some point in time all the way through tomorrow night. Now, Wednesday, more of the same. We start with showers along the Gulf Coast in the morning, moving it inland and toward the East Coast. And we could even have a few repeat customers throughout the day. Now, for Lake Mary, for the rest of the night tonight, only isolated showers, but a 50 to 60 percent rain chance pretty much any time from the lunch hour, especially through around 6 or 7 o'clock, and more of the same with some wet weather moving back into New Smyrna Beach. So it's kind of one of these. Make sure you have our free weather app, send you those early lightning alerts, because lightning will often precede these storms. 70 percent rain coverage tomorrow and again on Wednesday. Five-day forecast, weekend always in view, still showing at least a 60, perhaps as low as 50. But that is still above our seasonal average for rainfall through the very busy weekend. Live ahead of 545, which areas have had more than two feet of rain since the wet season began? Look forward to that, Tom. Thank you. A simple mistake with her push start car killed a woman and left her boyfriend with a brain injury. No one deserves to, you know, for that to happen. Night investigates just how quickly carbon monoxide poisoning can kill you and why a simple fix to avoid these accidents has not been approved. And then only on 9, police say a Seminole County man was stealing the identities of professional athletes, a well-known attorney, even a member of a popular boy band. How an unrelated drug got him busted. But first, parents at one struggling Volusia County school facing a tough choice. We're breaking down where they could transfer to leave their D-rated school and why one mother has faith in those teachers. Give me 10 minutes. We know mornings are tough. You have things to do, places to go. Is that still good? Uh, no. That's why Channel 9 Eyewitness News is here for you. This isn't small talk on a couch. It's real news from journalists with real experience. A weather forecast you can actually use. Storms are going to pop up right when the kids get out of school. And a traffic expert who knows more than just I-4. I just worked out this alternate route. Channel 9 Eyewitness News this morning, weekdays at 5. Orlando Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram is bringing the heat during the summer clearance event. I'm Gary Voss's Lisa brand new Ram 1500 starting at only $179 a month. Huge selection, just $179 a month. Shop online or visit us at Orlando Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram on West Colonial Drive. Do you know a local environmental volunteer? Someone who's preserving and improving the outdoor spaces we share? Whether picking up litter, planting a community garden, or restoring a shoreline, 
Nine Family Connection, our partners, and the Trust for Public Land want to recognize your hero. Nominate someone for the Cox Conserves Hero Award, and they could win $10,000 for their environmental nonprofit and compete for an additional $50,000. Nominate your hero now at ninefamily.com. Ooh, friendly, reliable, accessible, never overbearing, and knowledgeable. Oh. Hi, we're Frank. Welcome to Sun State Ford. I think I'm in the right place. Shop with Frank during our summer sales event. Drive this 2018 Focus SE for just $169 per month or 0% financing for 60 months or receive up to $4,000 cash back. Come find your match only at Sun State Ford. After a mass layoff, Hector struggled to find employment and stable housing. You lose your job. You lose pretty much a lot of things. Goodwill found the Army veteran a place to live provided job training, and gave him a bike to get to work. Now he's on the road to a better future. Goodwill changed my life. When you give to Goodwill, your dollars and donated items fund programs that change lives and give people like Hector a second chance. Because where there's goodwill, there's a way. It's the Honda Summer Spectacular Event going on now at Holler Honda and Classic Honda in Orlando. Every vehicle is clearly marked with our best price up front, so you see your price the minute you walk in. Right now, for a limited time, you can lease a brand new 2018 Honda Civic LX for only $159 per month, or lease the 2018 Honda CRV LX for only $229 per month. It's the Honda Summer Spectacular Event going on now at Holler Honda and Classic Honda in Orlando. We're covering Volusia County. This sign behind me right here. It says, D's don't define us. This is what's at the marquee outside of the school we're talking about in this story. Parents of children at that struggling school, for example, are faced with a choice. Stay or transfer. The state graded Palm Terrace Elementary School in Daytona Beach a D for the third straight year. Channel 9's Mike Springer talked to a parent of two students about the choice she plans to make for her family. Well, Ortona Elementary School here behind me is one of the four choices parents have to transfer into, but it's still almost six miles away. Parents tell me it's a difficult decision. They have less than four weeks to make. D's don't define us. That's the message on the sign outside of Palm Terrace Elementary School in Daytona Beach. The state graded the school a D for the third year in a row. They're very excited about starting school. They're very excited about starting um, at Palm Terrace because this is their first year there. It's excitement that's been tampered in recent days by the school's poor rating. The state mandate allows parents to transfer to another school before classes resume August 13th because of the three straight years of low grades. I'm a little concerned, but again, I'm a very involved parent, and I hold my children accountable. I will hold the, the teachers accountable and hold the school accountable. There are four options on the table for parents of the 715 students at Palm Terrace to consider. They can either send their children to Artona, which is the closest at 5.8 miles away, to Tomoka, which is 6.3 miles away, Sweetwater, which is 8.9, or Pine Trails, which is the furthest away at 9.4 miles. Others say they will stay put to see if things do improve. I do believe the school is going to have a better rating, uh, and I'm just willing to do my best. I'm not going to say, oh, no, we're not going to go. We're just going to put our best foot forward. Uh, give the school as much support as possible. As parents put their best foot forward in hopes the school will do the same. One mother tells me her daughter did once transfer into a D-rated school and it was able to turn things around. She's confident that Palm Terrace will be able to do the same. Reporting in Volusia County, Mike Springer, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. Some Brevard County residents are locking themselves inside their houses after a rabies alert was issued. Next to five, what this woman says happened when she spotted a rabid cat in her front yard. Plus, the changes one Central Florida Police Department was forced to make after this rifle was stolen out of a police cruiser. When weather is at its worst, count on the team in Severe Weather Center 9, alerting you first when storms move in. Keeping you connected when it matters most. The tools you need to track weather where you live. With insight from Chief Meteorologist Tom Terry and the experts who know Central Florida. Any screen, anywhere. So you're informed when it matters most. Severe Weather Center 9. Coverage you can count on. I was hit by a semi and paralyzed. My life changed overnight. 
I couldn't use my own bathroom, I couldn't shower, and I couldn't maneuver around my own house. Thank God we got attorney Dan Newland to help us. With the money Dan got us, we were able to build a new handicap accessible home. I can now maneuver through my home, go through the doorways, and put my kids to sleep at night. Dan, thank you very much for all you did for my husband and our family. Tax-free savings, free gifts, you get it all during Mattress One's incredible tax-free mattress sale. Buy a Sealy mattress, just $2.99, tax-free. Buy a Sealy Queen 8-inch memory foam mattress, only $3.99, tax-free. We have it in stock, so you can take it home today. Plus, enjoy free gifts and 0% APR for five years with equal payments. You get the mattress, you get the savings. We take care of the sales tax. Visit MattressOne.com to find a store near you. Go someplace really cool, like Ocala, Marion County. Enter our sweepstakes for a chance to win our three-night stay, three days of play getaway. Go to OcalaGetaway.com today for more information. Chill with us and explore Ocala, Marion County. This is Orlando. This is where we believe in magic and fantasies and wishing upon stars and the power of the imagination. This is where we believe in dreams and seeing them come true. This is Orlando, known around the world as the home of happiness. And to those who live here happily, as home. This is more than just a place to stay a while. It's a place to stay on the cutting edge. Here, innovation comes in every form, entertainment in every variety, and thriving businesses in every size. So if you think you know, all there is to know about Orlando, prepare to be surprised. Because until you get to really know this place, this community, and see all the reasons why it's so magical, rest assured, you don't know the half of it. This is Channel 9 Eyewitness News at 5.30. Coverage you can count on. It's grainy video, but the sound is crystal clear. Investigators say that now recovered rifle was stolen from a Tiberi's police cruiser and remained in the wrong hands for more than a year. The rifle was stolen from an officer's marked cruiser that was parked right in front of his house. And Tiberi's police say the theft prompted them to actually make a policy change. Shadow Nights Michael Laparty is live in Leesburg where the gun was recovered and Michael, investigators say the thief was pretty bold. Well, Martha, we're live out here to give you a little demonstration, even though this obviously is not a police cruiser. Tavares police say that rifle was stored in a special area right by the driver's seat, meaning the thief had to smash the window and also break the lock to get it right in front of the officer's home. The black rifle you see and here in this video provided by Leesburg police was actually stolen from a Tavares police cruiser more than a year ago. Tonight it's back in the hands of law enforcement. We're very glad that we got a uh, firearm out of the uh, control of that criminal and we've got it back to its rightful owner. On Saturday, Leesburg police arrested the man seen in the video firing the rifle into the ground, 26-year-old Kendrick Jones. Two officers actually heard the shots after Jones got into an altercation with neighbors. Investigators found the weapon along with ammunition and drugs when they searched his home. Generally speaking, uh, people don't walk out in broad daylight in the middle of a neighborhood and, and start firing off rounds. We don't know who initially stole the rifle from the marked cruiser, but Tavares police say they made changes soon after. A spokeswoman says the department issued a new policy that officers cannot leave weapons in their vehicles while off duty. Investigators use the serial number to link this rifle back to its rightful owner. Police couldn't say if the rifle may have been used in any other crimes. They're just happy it's no longer on the streets. Two other people who were at the home were also arrested on drug charges. Reporting live in Leesburg, Michael Laparty, Channel 9, Eyewitness News. New at 5, FBI investigators want Central Floridians to be on high alert following a recent blackmail scam. The agency's office in Ocala says it's received several reports of people claiming to get an anonymous letter. That letter comes from someone who claims to have evidence that the letter's recipient has been unfaithful to their spouse. The scammers demand money in exchange for not revealing the information. Tonight, we are still waiting for Sumter County deputies to identify the human remains found in the backyard of a missing man. Deputies say Claudio...
Carvajal Hernandez disappeared in mid-June. On Thursday, deputies discovered burned human remains in his backyard in Bushnell. Investigators say identifying the remains could take some time. New right now, five health officials in Brevard County have issued a rabies alert after a stray cat tested positive for the disease on Friday. Two people came into contact with that rabid cat. Now the alert for the Tucker Lane area near Coco will remain in place for the next two months. Channel 9's Melanie Holt is live in that area, and Mel, it's pretty heavily wooded as well. And a number of residents in this area tell me there's plenty of wildlife out here to keep an eye on. Right there, where the, where the tree is, the yellow thing, right there. On Friday, a stray cat in the area of Tucker Lane here in unincorporated Brevard County tested positive for rabies. Before it was captured, it ran through Pola Michael's front yard. She told us she hasn't worked out here since. If you're working out in the yard and the cat comes along, she bites you, what are you going to do? Michael says someone was in her yard when that rabid cat was spotted and he was chased down by the stray, as was a neighbor. This afternoon, the Florida Department of Health in Brevard County confirmed that two people were exposed. Health officials have issued a 60-day rabies alert for the Tucker Lane area, including the following boundaries. South Burnett Road to the east, Lake Point Set Road to the west, King Street to the north, and Plucky Bomb Road to the south. I'm very concerned now because I have a few that lived around the house here for quite a while. Rabies is a potentially fatal disease of the nervous system. An animal with rabies could infect pets that have not been vaccinated. There is a post-exposure treatment for humans, but health officials say wildlife contact should be avoided, particularly raccoons, bats, foxes, skunks, otters, bobcats, and coyotes. Watch where you're going when you go outside. Not only are there cats here, there's snakes and all kinds of things. <laughs> Already in Brevard County this year, in addition to that rabid cat, three raccoons and a bat have also tested positive for rabies. We're live here in Brevard County. Melanie Holtz, Channel 9, Eyewitness News. The murder of a transgender woman had an Orlando apartment complex is still unsolved tonight. 27-year-old Sasha Garden was found at the Lake Buchanan Apartments on Holden Avenue early Thursday morning. There's no word yet on a possible motive or if deputies are looking for a suspect. Over the weekend, the Orange County Sheriff issued an apology for originally identifying the victim as a man. Meanwhile, Orlando police have yet to release any suspect information in another murder from last week. On Wednesday of last week, police say someone shot and killed William Graham at the Windsor Cove apartment complex. Neighbors told us Graham was a father of young children. No word yet on a motive behind his death. Tonight, there's another case of testing Florida's stand your ground law. Last week, a man was shot and killed over a parking spot dispute in the Tampa area. And since then, protesters have not abandoned the streets. Channel 9 anchor Vanessa Echols joined us live right now and Vanessa they want the stand your ground law to be changed they do Martha they say this is a clear case that shows the law needs to be updated in the meantime we are now hearing from the woman whose boyfriend's death is at the center of this controversy protesters demanding justice for Marquise McLaughlin rallying outside the Clearwater store where the 28 year old father of three was shot and killed over a parking space hey, hey. The man who pulled the trigger was not charged by police, who call it an example of the state's so-called stand your ground law that gives Floridians the right to protect themselves if they feel threatened. I just want justice. I, I need something to be done because this, this is not right. The entire incident was captured on surveillance video. In it, we see McLaughlin's girlfriend, Brittany Jacobs, get approached by 47-year-old Michael Dreska. They say he told her she had illegally parked in a handicapped spot. McLaughlin ran over and pushed Dredka to the ground. That's when he fought back, taking out a gun, shooting and killing McLaughlin. He collapsed in front of my son, and within 30 minutes, he was gone. Police say the shooting was self-defense. Right. That's the tricky thing about stand your ground. Even if the attacker, alleged attacker, is retreating, you can still use deadly force against them. But the store owner says he's had to call the cops on Dreska for confronting other customers before. For a parking lot? For a stupid reason? Just to argue? Just to find someone to argue with? Protesters say they won't stop fighting until the law is changed. Since it was first enacted in Florida in 2005, more than two dozen states have adopted some form of that law. George? 
Vanessa, thank you. And this isn't the first time Stand Your Ground, by the way, has made headlines. It was also used as the defense argument for former neighborhood watchman George Zimmerman here in Central Florida. Zimmerman killed unarmed 17-year-old Trayvon Martin back in 2012. The shooting and Zimmerman's acquittal, as you may recall, sparked national outrage. Tonight, we are waiting for investigators in Toronto to release the name of the gunman who opened fire and killed two people in a busy street. The attack happened on Sunday. Police say a 10-year-old girl and an 18-year-old woman were killed. 13 others were injured. The gunman died after an exchange of gunfire with police. Investigators have not released a motive but did not rule out terrorism. The city of Orlando has some new results regarding a project that shrunk Curry Ford Road in April. The new report says speeding decreased by 53% while walking and biking increased at the same time. The report also shows drive time only increased by up to six minutes, but neighboring streets saw an increase in traffic. Grant Street, for example, saw an extra 500 cars a day. Over time, it was a smoother process, and I think other people found other avenues to get to their home besides taking Curry Ford. The city of Orlando will present the findings of the project on August 14th at the Dover Shores Community Center. The duck boat that sank on a Missouri lake killing 17 people is now being taken to a secure facility where transportation officials will examine it. It took several divers, a barge crane, and water pumps to take it out from 80 feet below the surface. There's no word yet on why it sank, but tonight, a survivor who lost nine family members in this accident, including her baby, is desperate for answers. Since I've had a home, it's always been filled. It's, it's, it's always been filled with little feet and laughter. And my husband, I don't know, I'm going to do it. Mm. Authorities are determining whether the operators were monitoring the weather when they decided to take that trip during a massive storm. Well, if uh, you're binging on Netflix on the couch, maybe playing Spotify in the car, you may not hear an important emergency alert. A bipartisan bill introduced in the Senate would explore adding emergency alerts to those streaming services. It would also prevent you from opting out or turning off alerts on your mobile phone. Senators say people should stay informed no matter what. Any type of communication that we could have that gets these alerts out to the community is important. The FCC says it's already making efforts to modernize emergency alerts by creating better targeted wireless alerts with more information. Netflix had no comment on this bill. Facebook has suspended another data analytics firm. According to the Wall Street Journal, Crimson Hexagon had contracts to use public Facebook data for governmental agencies and a Russian nonprofit. The data collecting site has been suspended during an investigation. This comes after a scandal earlier this year when data mining firm Cambridge Analytica obtained information from more than 87 million Facebook users without their knowledge. The start of the school year is right around the corner, and Okoe police want students to stay safe and report anything suspicious. Police reminding students of Speak Out, which is a hotline that works like Crime Line, but it's just for kids. Calls to the hotline will remain anonymous. We have a link to Speak Out on the web link section of WFTV.com, and that can be a very useful tool for kids. Should future women in Orlando be worried about not having a doctor to deliver their babies? All new at 5 o'clock, the many reasons why experts say the city beautiful could start running out of OBGYNs. Everybody and their mothers have admitted they can do it for pennies on the dollar. What's the problem? After losing his girlfriend to carbon monoxide poisoning, this man wants changes. Not investigates why nothing's been done to make push start cars safer. Well, another round of showers and storms. I'm updating more for later tonight and what this has done to our rainfall totals and our river flood levels coming up. Selfless service is the principle that guides Army National Guard soldiers to be ready whenever disaster strikes. They have a stake in the well-being of the neighborhoods where they live and work. They train part-time to be ready to serve at all times. Selfless service. It's what inspires the men and women of the Army National Guard to be part of something greater than themselves. Visit NationalGuard.com to learn more. I'm Mark Jonas, Family Steamer, Central Florida. As a family-owned business, we are proud to give back to the community as a nine family connection partner. By supporting important causes in our community, we can make a difference. Get involved! Staley Steamer and Nine Family Connection. Community coverage you can count on. There are more than 3,000 children waiting to be adopted in Florida. The average foster child eligible for adoption waits two and a half years for that special day. When it comes, Mattress One wants to be there. 
Many of these children have never had a bed of their own. Mattress One wants to change that. This year, every child adopted through community-based care of Central Florida will receive a brand new mattress from Mattress One. Together, we can make a difference in the lives of foster children. Storms here can move 65 miles an hour. I've covered tornadoes moving at almost 70. At Channel 9, we have the most advanced technology. We're looking for signs of spin, rotation, in case a tornado drops out. That's why we have the experienced team that we have. We want to give you the time frame of when the storm's going to hit. We can let you know where a storm's going to be, when it's going to be there, and what you need to know to stay safe. This is what we do. We take pride in this. I'm going to be here, and we're all going to be here. And that's coverage you can count on. A flash flood warning is now in effect for Tallahassee, Florida. Keeping a NOAA radio in your home will alert you of any dangerous weather in the area. In the event of a flash flood, be prepared to evacuate to a safe location. Secure all important documents and belongings and avoid areas subject to flooding. Follow your pre-planned evacuation route and never drive through flooded roadways. Keep you and your family safe. Get a plan. This is Orlando. This is where we believe in magic and fantasies and wishing upon stars and the power of the imagination. This is where we dream, where we think smarter and play harder. So if you think you know all there is to know about Orlando, you're in for a big surprise. Because until you join our community and see all the reasons we're amazing, you don't know the half of it. I'm Mark Jonas, Family Scammer Central Florida. As a family-owned business, we are proud to give back to the community as a nine family connection partner. By supporting important causes in our community, we can make a difference. Get involved! Staley Schemer, Nine Family Connection. Community coverage you can count on. Watch Seinfeld's Guide to Social Norms five times a week. <laughs> this is normal. It's a night at six on TV 27. All new at 6, this man arrested, accused of stealing the identities of famous athletes and celebrities, including a member of the Backstreet Boys. The evidence detectives say they found in the trunk of his car during an unrelated call. All new at 6 on Channel 9, Eyewitness News. There's an urgent, renewed push to make push-start cars safer. This is more people across the country are poisoned by carbon monoxide gas when vehicles were accidentally left running in garages because all you do is push that button. You don't need a key. At least 28 people killed since 2006, 15 of those right here in Florida. In fact, this month, four senators, including our very own Bill Nelson, urging federal regulators to finally make car makers program some sort of warning in those cars. Let's get right to Channel 9's Megan Cruz, who teamed up with the local fire department to show you just how quickly carbon monoxide gas can actually kill you. So here's my last three. Timothy Maddock lives his life by these to-do lists, not by choice, but necessity. Here's how crazy it is. I wrote three o'clock attorney right here and here. Maddox suffers from a severe brain injury where he has no short-term memory after he and his girlfriend were poisoned by carbon monoxide gas eight years ago. By the time Palm Beach deputies found them up in their third floor bedroom, Chastity Gleason was dead and Maddox unconscious. And I remember when I fell down, like right at the bathroom door, I saw the dog thrown up under the bed the same way she was. Investigators say Gleason brought her key fob into the house, not realizing the car parked in her attached garage hadn't turned off. Federal regulators right now do not require car makers to program an automatic shutoff or warning when this happens. So, we wanted to know how quickly can carbon monoxide become deadly? We borrowed a keyless car and parked it to find out. So the car's still running. The keys are coming out with me. We're now going to have the firefighters come in here. All right, well, we'll set that in here. With carbon monoxide monitors. Close this. Before shutting the door. Within 25 minutes, the carbon monoxide meter soared to above 100 parts per million. According to Lieutenant Michael Scott, sustained exposure to these levels could mean... Nausea, vomiting, headaches. But what's scarier is that at this rate, Lieutenant Scott says you could reach 1,200 parts per million within three hours. And, and that's deadly, like yes. instantaneous. Uh, IDLH is what we call it, immediately dangerous to life and health. And unless properly ventilated, that buildup of carbon monoxide... It would start Eventually seeping start into seeping, the house. Yep, it follows, yep. Like it did 
with Gleason. With lives at stake, Maddock is furious. No one is holding car makers accountable. I don't get it. You know, they do it for seatbelts, they do it for airbags. How many more people got to die before they do something about it? Megan Cruz, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. Fascinating look at that. Meanwhile, the speed at which carbon monoxide builds up in a garage depends on how well insulated the garage is, also the make of the car. Eight years ago, in fact, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration said programming an alert would cost car makers pennies per vehicle and could obviously save lives. The city of Orlando is getting closer to passing new rules for landlords, including requiring them to put more smoke detectors into their units. The new code would require new buildings to have smoke detectors in and outside of all bedrooms. Some detectors will also be linked up with each other. The current code only requires one smoke detector in a building, no matter its size. A Sanford mother is now driving around with her child securely seated after a very emotional traffic stop. The Sanford officer says she saw this woman driving with her child not properly restrained, so she pulled her over. That mom said she didn't have the money to buy a car seat, so the officer bought her one with her own money. The driver received a citation. Most importantly, that baby is now safe. Yes. In that. Vehicle. He's like, hey, I'm looking backwards. What <laughs> happened? What's mom? going on here? Safest place to be. Hey, and back there in Severe Weather Center 9, you were crunching some numbers, and the results are really incredible. I was pretty good in math back in the day. George Waldenberger better. So he's in charge of the numbers on this one, all right? Hope we got it all right. Daytona Beach, a foot above average since the wet season began. That's a foot above average. That's a lot of rain. Orlando, we had record rain yesterday. So far, we are just, well, we're just shy of 23 inches, nearly two feet of rain in just the last, what, a little over uh, seven weeks or so. Uh, Melbourne, uh, over 18 inches of rain. It should be nine weeks. See, math is evading me. Right now, showers along the coast moving out. We're still seeing some pretty Pretty good downpours though and all this water that flows in from various tributaries south along the St. John's River. Of course, the river flows north to Jacksonville, but all these rivers, tributaries, streams, etc., all flow into the St. John's. It's a very slow moving river. So it takes forever for this thing to go down. It doesn't take long for it to go up. So far, we still have flood warnings down to the south and along the northern parts. And that's where we have minor flooding already just below uh, Lake George at Astor and on the south side of uh, the Lake Harney area near Geneva. It's at action stage in the middle, meaning it's still below flood stage, but it's high. So we're hoping that we don't aggravate it with a tropical system, which we know dumps a feet of rain into the basin in a short period of time. We've still had some pretty good downpours today, finally pushing the last bit of rain across the causeway over by Melbourne Beach. We're still seeing some isolated showers as we go all the way up in toward Lake Helen. Here's Casadega north of Sanford along I-4 and still getting some scattered downpours coming in off the Gulf of Mexico. There's a storm system through here, very rare July storm, and it's going to make for scattered showers and storms over the next at least three days. This rare upper level storm, pieces of energy break off of this low and slide through. When they do, whether it's in the afternoon or in the middle of the night, it can generate rain. We had this pattern to kick off the wet season back in May. Lots of moisture to work with. Certainly it's humid outside, right? Well, that's the moisture. Plus, we still have our daily sea breeze to get things going. So we've got a lot of rainmakers. That's the bottom line. Through tonight, still some scattered downpours past 11 o'clock. We'll start out quiet, though, but here comes 1 o'clock in the afternoon, the beginning of what's going to be another wet day for most of us. Nothing to necessarily cancel plans over. Just be advised by the afternoon hours. Outdoor plans may have to be moved indoors. 70% storm coverage tomorrow and Wednesday. Your five-day forecast weekend always in view. Still keeps active rainfall through Thursday. Just a little bit drier, but still scattered storms all the way through the weekend. I'll see you at 6. All new at 6, police say this man used stolen identities of famous people to write bad checks. How someone else's slip-up got him caught. Plus, Eyewitness News broke the news that a handyman is accused of killing an elderly couple in their home. The tip that helped deputies make an arrest. And an Orange County woman says she's having trouble getting help after a domestic violence incident involving a sheriff's deputy. She's been very frustrated, she's scared. We're asking the sheriff's office why it hasn't turned over the one piece of evidence she needs. Let me just a little bit like, give me 10 minutes. We know mornings are tough. You have things to do, places to go. Is that still good? Ugh, no. That's
That's why Channel 9 Eyewitness News is here for you. This isn't small talk on a couch. It's real news from journalists with real experience. A weather forecast you can actually use. Storms are going to pop up right when the kids get out of school. And a traffic expert who knows more than just I-4. I just worked out this alternate route. Channel 9 Eyewitness News this morning, weekdays at 5. Families are fun. They just go together. Fun Spot's proud to be a partner of WFTV's Nine Family Connections. After all, Fun Spot is Orlando's hometown amusement park. Now that's huge. Go someplace really cool, like Ocala, Marion County. Enter our sweepstakes for a chance to win our three-night stay, three days of play getaway. Go to OcalaGetaway.com today for more information. Chill with us and explore Ocala, Marion County. At Channel 9 Eyewitness News, we know you need more than just a five-day forecast. That's why we use the tools here in Severe Weather Center 9 to break down the science behind your weather. We take you beyond the numbers to focus on how weather impacts your life, giving you a first-hand perspective so you'll always have the full story. Every day, every newscast. Channel 9 Eyewitness News is weather coverage you can count on. Soldiers in the Army National Guard live up to a set of time-honored principles. They stand ready to respond to any crisis. They serve in their communities as citizens and as soldiers. They train part-time to be ready to serve at all times. Learn more at NationalGuard.com. This is Orlando. This is where we believe in magic and fantasies and wishing upon stars and the power of the imagination. This is where we believe in dreams and seeing them come true. This is Orlando, known around the world as the home of happiness and to those who live here happily as home. This is more than just a place to stay a while. It's a place to stay on the cutting edge. Here, innovation comes in every form, entertainment in every variety, and thriving businesses in every size. So if you think you know all there is to know about Orlando, prepare to be surprised. Because until you get to really know this place, this community, and see all the reasons why it's so magical, rest assured, you don't know the half of it. Orlando's biggest stories are live on Channel 9 Eyewitness News. Right now, some Orlando OBGYN doctors are leaving the profession early, and some of them are not even giving it a fair chance. Channel 9's Sarah Beth Ackerman found out why Orlando is on the verge of slipping into an OBGYN shortage and why those doctors are not sticking around. So we hear Dr. Carson Rodifer graduated from Florida State. Now he's working on his residency at Winnie Palmer, specializing in OBGYN, an area in medicine a lot of students are turning away from. OBGYN, I actually thought that that was what I did not want to do going to medical school. I had heard the classical, oh, you never sleep, uh, you work all the time, you never see your family. That is just one of the many reasons why some students are not signing up. While we're not there yet, Orlando OBGYN doctors are preparing for a possible shortage, knowing it's not far away. So why are people straying away from the industry? There's a couple of reasons. The first comes down to demanding hours. If you're a solo doctor, the demand is higher. They will answer your phone calls at 3 a.m. If you have a question about your pregnancy, they will come in and deliver you on Christmas and they will see you for all your visits. If you work with a group of doctors, you may not have as much pressure. There are 23 of us, and so while I cannot promise you that I personally will deliver you as a patient of mine, I can promise you that you're going to have a well-rested doctor who knows what they're doing. Others are skeptical to practice in Florida because of litigation issues. People who choose to practice in Florida know that they're going to get sued more often than other states. Um, and some people are just not interested in having to deal with that. For Dr. Rodifer, he says this is where he wants to be and plans on practicing right here in Florida. Reporting in Orlando, I'm Sarah Beth Ackerman, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. Winnie Palmer is a teaching hospital, meaning it takes medical students on rotations. They graduate seven resident physicians every year. Most of the seven graduating doctors stay in Florida. 
Highway Patrol troopers are searching for a suspected road rage driver involved in a deadly hit and run. So new for 6 o'clock today, the key piece of evidence that could make it easier to find the person responsible. Plus, police say this man was using celebrities' identities to write bad checks. How a drug call led to his arrest. And next, Osceola County deputies arrested a man a week after an elderly couple was found dead. Only Eyewitness News uncovered the trail of evidence that led to the suspect. Money, save time with easy checking from McCoy Federal. Get access to your account 24-7, online and on our mobile app. Plus, there's no minimum balance fee or monthly service fee. Make the easy choice with easy checking. Apply now at McCoyFCU.org. When it's time to get a new car, you want to buy from someone you trust. Someone you consider a friend. Someone who is family. At Jenkins Nissan of Leesburg, we're here to make sure you experience nothing less. Because here, we want you to feel right at home. Drive away today in the all-new redefined Nissan Rogue Sport for only $159 per month. Jenkins Nissan of Leesburg. Welcome to the family. We're on to you, corruption. Government waste, your time is up. And all you scams and rip-offs out there, your days are numbered. Because Nine Investigates is coming after you. Every day, we're exposing the lies, loopholes, and con artists trying to cheat us all. Nine Investigates, only on Channel 9 Eyewitness News. It's coverage you can count on. Watch Channel 9 Eyewitness News on your Apple TV, Roku, or Amazon Fire TV. Central Florida's most watched news and weather. It's free on demand. Watch it live or on your own time. Download the Channel 9 app right now. Just search WFTV. Save money, save time with easy checking from McCoy Federal. Get access to your account 24-7, online and on our mobile app. Plus, there's no minimum balance fee or monthly service fee. Make the easy choice with easy checking. Apply now at McCoyFCU.org. This is Channel 9 Eyewitness News at 6. Coverage you can count on. Right now, this man is sitting behind bars, accused of killing an elderly couple after he earned their trust. New at 6, we found out a woman in another county helped lead deputies to the suspect. The deputies say the suspect worked as a handyman for that couple and was trying to extort them before their deaths. Good evening, I'm George Estevez. And I'm Martha Sigalski. Only Eyewitness News uncovered documents showing what led up to the murders and how the suspect tried to cover it all up. Earlier today, Channel 9's Shannon Butler broke news of the arrest that happened a week after the victim's bodies were found. She joins us live right now from the Osceola County Jail. And Shannon, the suspect was no stranger to the couple. Well, he was not. He had been inside the home and even worked on that couple's computer. People who knew that couple said they were sweet, they were loving, they were kind, and that could be why they were also a target. The tributes to Roosevelt Dixon are starting to pour in on the Osceola Memory Gardens page. Sherry Ogden writing, quote, he was a Christian man with a kind heart and a kind word for everyone. Others saying that they work with the 74-year-old man at Queens Hospital in New York for years. Detective saying he and his wife had just returned to Kissimmee from their northern home when deputies did a check on them. July 14th, they found the couple shot to death inside the office of that home. Detectives say it seems that Roosevelt and his wife, Janet Dixon, were just sitting down to breakfast when Federico Gondola showed up. According to paperwork, he was the couple's handyman and did work on their computer. They suspected it was someone they knew because there was no forced entry. They found that the lockbox was missing and the hard drive on those surveillance cameras was also gone. But a big break came in when the woman told police she had details of the murders. According to the paperwork, the woman said Gondola told her and her boyfriend that he found child pornography on the computer and tried to use that to extort money from the 74-year-old. Well, I don't believe it because there's no reason for me to actually suspect this of them. Gondola said that Mr. Dixon came after him with a gun and he shot the elderly man and then his wife because she walked in on it. The charge is murder. Bond is set at zero dollars. Gondola was arrested more than a week later. Today he faces a judge charged with murder. The couple had a million dollars in the bank and in life insurance policies. It's unclear just what he knew about their finances, but it says he knew enough, just not enough to keep quiet. 
Now, Osceola County is not releasing more details on this case. There are a lot of questions here, especially since documents show that that woman first called 911 on July 10th. That was four days before that well-being check. We are live tonight at the Osceola County Jail. Shannon Butler, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. An Orlando man nearly got shot chasing the people who stole his car right out of his driveway. It happened off of Goldenrod before dawn today. Then deputies spotted the stolen car on Semeron around noon, tried to pull it over, and ended up in a chase that stopped with a wreck on OBT. The original victim told us he was scared to death when the thieves started shooting at him and into the house where his family was sleeping. The guy on the driver's side pulled up the gun and, and sh shot two times on the air, and then I ran back to my house in the front of my house. Orlando police say the three people arrested are facing grand theft and carjacking charges. One of the three is also facing an attempted murder charge. FHP says the search has expanded now for a red vehicle and its driver who left the scene of a fatal hit and run in Brevard County. This actually happened Saturday night. Look at that right there along State Road 528. That is incredible. So more details. Now the search is centered around a specialty license plate like this one right here. It actually says Endless Summer. Channel Line's Angela Jacobs live at FHP headquarters for us now at 6 o'clock. And Angela, the good thing here is that at least troopers are saying that tips are coming in. And George, they are pursuing every one of them, including tracking down the maker of a sticker, a small sticker someone saw on that car. Right now, they are compiling a list of everyone that purchased that specialty license plate and finding out how many drivers who bought it have a red car. I miss him so much. Heartbroken, Amber Roach has one message for the hit and run driver who she believes is responsible for the crash that killed the man she's called her stepdad since she was four years old. Bro, conscious. 58 year old Jeffrey Brookshire died Saturday in this wreckage along State Road 528 when troopers say another driver hit his Mustang from behind, forced it across the median, and into an SUV. Brookshire's 26 year old passenger and friend Shannon Fisher is hospitalized in critical condition. Hey, what's wrong, Mike? I'm alert. 911 calls caught the chaos that unfolded when other drivers summoned help. A doctor, anywhere, a doctor. Witnesses reported the dark blue Mustang and a red passenger vehicle were traveling in eastbound lanes when they became involved in some type of road rage exchange. We don't even know if the contact was intentional. We believe it wasn't intentional. But the fact is, is the vehicle careened into the opposite lanes of traffic. An innocent party heading westbound hit them pretty much head on. They didn't know what was coming. At the center of the investigation, this Florida issued endless summer specialty license plate. FHP told me analysts are pouring through databases working to identify vehicles to which it's registered and find out how many of them are red. We want to locate it and uh, find out why they could do such a thing. And troopers say that red vehicle also should have some front end damage. It has dark tinted windows and a hemac hippie sticker on the back. Reporting live in Orlando at FHP headquarters, Angela Jacobs, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. Police in Ocoee are searching for a hit and run driver, too, who injured a motorcyclist. Police say early yesterday morning, a Jeep Wrangler turned in front of a motorcycle at Ocoee Apopka Road and West Road. Officers say the Jeep driver stopped briefly, then took off towards State Road 429. The motorcyclist suffered minor injuries. The city of Orlando expanded a policy in hopes more undocumented immigrants will report crimes. City commissioners passed the policy unanimously. The goal is to eliminate the fear of deportation. The city says police and all city workers will not use immigration status as a reason to question or detain someone. There's so many components to this that are going to help reassure not just the immigrant communities, but I think as a city, feeling unified, feeling that this is a welcome, welcoming city. The policy also says police will fill out a visa application form for victims who help them solve certain crimes like human trafficking and domestic violence. Two teenagers have turned themselves in for allegedly killing a man during a shooting along busy Alafaya Trail. They're now held without bond in the shooting death of Jonathan Bryant last week. That's a shooting that happened between two vehicles near UCF and then ended with that crash on Alafaya. A passenger in the crashed Jeep tried to run away from the scene but was captured and arrested on an unrelated warrant. Both 19-year-olds, Maurice Smith and Andreas Lee, are expected to appear before a judge in the morning. A Lake County School Bus Monitor charged with 32 counts of child abuse is scheduled
will be back in court next month. James Brunson was set to be arraigned this morning, but the case was continued. Deputies say the 26-year-old abused four special needs children on bus routes to and from Sorrento Elementary School. They say bus surveillance showed Brunson forcefully pulling and twisting the children's heads and arms and pushing them against the wall of the bus. New at 6, an Akoi man is accused of using the names and information of several well-known celebrities, athletes, and lawmakers to write and cash fake checks. This is crazy. Channel Line's Jeff Left Coolidge found out some of those victims told FDLE investigators that debt collectors even came calling as a result of this. And Jeff, you're live in Altamont Springs now where this investigation began really more than three years ago. That's right, George. It began in the parking lot of this Home Depot. Police were called here after reports of drug use in a car in the parking lot. What they found when they arrived was the suspect with several fake driver's licenses with names and information of some very well-known people. Michael Todd Waters. Eyewitness News was the only one in court today as Michael Waters faced a judge. According to court documents, Waters had fake driver's licenses and counterfeit checks made up using the names of 22 famous individuals, which include professional baseball player Johnny Damon, NFL football star Zach Thomas, tennis star Jennifer Capriotti, and Howie from the Backstreet Boys. This is another clear case of identity theft, and it shows us that no one is immune. Agent Danny Banks with FDLE says the initial investigation began in the parking lot of Home Depot with Altamont Springs Police. Who did a great job in arresting him originally and they came across a lot of evidence that this guy contained uh, in his vehicle fraudulent driver's licenses, checks, and other information that they knew that something's not right here. Investigators say Waters used those fraudulent checks with the names of those celebrities and other personal information at various stores to pay for thousands of dollars in goods and services. Waters would then return the goods for cash. Waters told investigators he'd like to do the purchase and return scheme for the, quote, thrill of it. Banks says people like Waters who steal other people's identities sometimes have nothing to lose. Sometimes they're in prison. In case uh, this individual was doing federal prison time for exactly this type of act. We're coming after them. If they don't learn their lesson, we're coming after them again. Now, Howie from the Backstreet Boys told investigators that collection companies were calling him and he could not determine how his information was being utilized to utter those fraudulent checks. Now, as for Waters, he remains jailed in the Seminole County Jail on $220,000 bond. Reporting live in Altamont Springs, Jeff Left Coolidge, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. New right now at 6, an Orange County Corrections officer was arrested in Altamont Springs following a domestic violence charge. Anthony Bryant went before a Seminole County judge this afternoon. According to the arrest report, the victim and Bryant had a fight and the victim claimed that he choked her. Bryant was released on $5,000 bond and will have to wear a GPS monitor. Accused cop killer Marquise Lloyd is still trying to convince a judge to move him out of isolation and into the general population at the Orange County Jail. Late last month, Lloyd filed a petition asking to be moved out of restrictive housing. He has since filed more supplemental documents trying to prove why he should be given more freedom. The new documents show Lloyd was denied a move in early June by the Corrections Department, saying he poses a serious threat to staff as well as other inmates. Students head back to school in just a couple of weeks, right? And security changes are on their way too. By now, local districts must have a designated school safety specialist to oversee security. The state just sent out a new memo explaining the training requirements. The specialist will have to take part in a special training program developed by the education department, but the details haven't quite been finalized yet. Staying with school news now, a Volusia County school is trying to convince parents and students to stay despite three straight years of degrades from the state. D's don't define us, is what the sign outside of Palm Terrace Elementary School in Daytona Beach reads. Three straight years of D's puts into motion a state mandate, giving parents actually the option to transfer to another school. Students can transfer to Ortona, Pine Trails, Sweetwater or Tacoma Elementary Schools. An Orlando police officer who was shot in the head while responding to a domestic violence call last month is still recovering in Atlanta. OPD says Officer Kevin Valencia is still in a coma at the Shepherd Center. Officer Valencia was shot in early June during a hostage situation. The suspect also killed four children before himself.
An Orange County domestic violence victim says she's having trouble getting help because of a delay by the sheriff's office. Coming up, the one piece of evidence she says she needs but just can't get it. Also, residents say someone is killing peacocks in this Orlando neighborhood. Why the birds are ruffling feathers among those who live here. Well, more rain in the offing. There's a rare storm system very far south, giving us an even higher chance for rain. I'll take you through this hour by hour coming up. Central Florida's most experienced meteorologist in Severe Weather Center 9. Now you can get Channel 9 Eyewitness News updates on your Amazon Echo device. How cool is this? You ask a question, Alexa, what's in the news today? And it gives you an answer. Here's your flash briefing from WFTV in Orlando. Good morning, everyone. I'm Channel 9's Jamie Holmes. Today, the union representing... To get news updates, open the Alexa app on your phone, search WFTV under Skills, then enable the flash briefing. For many local families, back to school can be a financial burden. And many students don't have the school supplies they need to start the school year. Nine Family Connection and Hope Now Foundation want to help thousands of local students receive health screenings, backpacks, and resources they need at the Back to School Bash July 29th at the Amway Center. You can sponsor a student for just $20. Help us make sure they have the tools they need for a successful school year. Donate today at ninefamily.com. We live with such a, a unique climate here in Central Florida, and we know that storms can turn severe in a moment's notice. A million watt radar can keep you ahead of that storm. We can give you earlier warnings when a storm happens. We could track these storms right down to street level. And we have all the tools here in Severe Weather Center 9 to keep you safe. It's more than just all the data. We have great data, but it comes down to, I think, the experience that we have. So no matter what does happen with that storm, we're going to be here for you. That's our promise. <laughs> We know mornings are tough. You have things to do, places to... Whoa, is that still good? Ugh, no. That's why Channel 9 Eyewitness News is here for you. This isn't small talk on a couch. It's real news from journalists with real experience. A weather forecast you can actually use. Storms are going to pop up right when the kids get out of school. And a traffic expert who knows more than just I-4. I just worked out this alternate... Channel 9 Eyewitness News this morning, weekdays at 5. A flash flood warning is now in effect for Tallahassee, Florida. Keeping a NOAA radio in your home will alert you of any dangerous weather in the area. In the event of a flash flood, be prepared to evacuate to a safe location. Secure all important documents and belongings and avoid areas subject to flooding. Follow your pre-planned evacuation route and never drive through flooded roadways. Keep you and your family safe. Get a plan. New at 6, an attorney claims a domestic violence victim's state compensation claim hasn't even been processed one month after filing it. Last week, Orange County Sheriff's Deputy David Burdick was charged with misdemeanor battery in connection with the woman's report. Channel 9's Deanna Albritton is looking at what the woman's lawyer says she's facing as she tries to move forward. If you've been a victim of certain crimes, you can fill out an application to get help paying for things like counseling, lost wages, and even relocation. In this case, the woman and her lawyer say her claim has been delayed and may be closed out if the AG's office doesn't get one document from the sheriff's office. She's been very frustrated. She's scared. Chad Frost says after his client filed this police report claiming she was beaten and bruised by Orange County Sheriff's Deputy David Burdick, she had to make big life changes to stay safe. After the incident happened, she um, has needed help and um, from certain advocacy groups in the Central Florida area. Frost says the woman decided to file a claim through the Attorney General's Victim Compensation Fund on June 18th, three weeks after the incident. At that time, Frost says the AG's office requested a copy of the incident report from OCSO since it's needed to get benefits. Four weeks later, on July 18th, he says the AG still didn't have it. On that date, his client got this letter stating her claim was still, quote, waiting on the law enforcement report and that a request was sent to OCSO that afternoon as well. It's just very frustrating for her to, to deal with this whole process and to have... You know, something so simple as the Attorney General Office not be able to get these reports from the Orange County Sheriff's 
office is frustrating itself. An OCSO spokesperson says in a quick search, they could only find one time the AG's office asked for the report on July 17th. And the AG's office won't discuss the details because it's domestic violence. The sheriff's office says it has since fulfilled the request. In an email, the AG's office says it's continuing to work with the victim to expedite her claim as soon as possible. And that AG office spokesperson tells me they receive incident reports with applications about 75% of the time, but still wouldn't confirm if they have this one. When the victim isn't able to provide one or doesn't have access to one, like in this case, they do reach out to law enforcement, which they say often expedites their request. Deanna Alberton, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. The Victim Service Center of Central Florida is trying to prevent sexual assault. The center is hosting a free training session this week. The sexual assault awareness and prevention will be Friday at 2 o'clock in the afternoon at Nova Southeastern Orlando campus. People living north of downtown Orlando believe one of their neighbors killed five peacocks with fireworks or a flare gun. Up to 30 peacocks roam free on the streets near Bumby and Chelsea. And some folks love them, but others say, well, they're just too noisy and have bred out of control. One man told us about 16 roost up in his tree over his house at night, and his complaints to the city have gone nowhere. If the city simply removed the birds and brought them to a proper environment where they could live happy lives and we could live happy lives. And the city of Orlando says that there's no ordinance protecting peafowl. Peafowl are both the male uh -huh. and the female. Okay. There you go. Uh -huh. Or regulating their existence in city limits. Beautiful birds. But yeah, they, they they're very do, noisy. They, they leave a mess they behind. They do some too. damage. SunRail started a new schedule today ahead of next week's southern expansion. SunRail says it's now running more trains and for longer hours. Next week, trains will also start running on the new southern route, which extends the service from the Sand Lake Station to the Poinciana area. New at 6 o'clock, a trip to the Kennedy Space Center will now cost you more money. The visitor complex has increased daily ticket prices for the first time since 2012. An adult ticket now costs $57. It will cost children $47. KSC says over the past six years, it has completed more than 300 projects at the visitor complex. So more to see, so you pay more to go. But hey, it's a piece of history. It and is. It's right here in our backyard. So many great things in our backyard. <laughs> Where else are you going to go and be just beyond arm's reach of a space shuttle? See? I mean, yeah. it's right there. Right. It's really impressive how they do that. <laughs> you know, they had the magic players go over to see if actually one of them could actually reach out and touch it. And? And, and they could not. So they knew they had it far enough away. <laughs> I remember that uh, when they told us that story. Great. Right now we have clouds and it is certainly very humid. Our rain chances still staying high. What else is new, right? Well, there's a, a storm system in our backyard that normally isn't there this time of the year. We've had most of the rain and storms move off the east coast. Still a little bit of shower activity here and there. And we're still importing some rain and energy off the Gulf of Mexico. So Marion County will continue to keep an eye on you throughout the evening hours tonight. Water vapor loops kind of hard to see, but there's a little spin right in here. You can see this moisture plume that's coming in. This little piece of energy is going to kind of get stretched out in the Gulf. Little pieces break off. And there you go. You've got more juice to make more storms. And that's exactly what's going to be happening here for the next couple of days. Through 8 o'clock tonight, an isolated thunderstorm here along the East Coast and still some kind of spiraling pieces of energy breaking off from this storm system. But generally speaking, more during the afternoon hours, once we get the sea breeze going, the daytime heating, all those normal rainmakers, we'll get scattered showers and thunderstorms and a good chance about 70% coverage of rain for tomorrow. So it's not like all day, but it's kind of coming in fits and spurts all throughout the day into tomorrow night. Even on Wednesday, we'll start with rain along the Gulf Coast in the morning, spread a good coverage of showers and storms throughout the afternoon hours as well. This likely pattern will continue into Thursday as well before we back off a little bit for Friday and the weekend. Lake Mary, temperatures upper 80s tomorrow, 60% rain chance between 3 and 4 o'clock. Also good chance for downpours over at New Smyrna and Cocoa Beach, rain likely for you also over the next couple of days. So anyway you slice it, we've got a good chance you're going to get some more rain. Five-day forecast, the weekend always in view. 70% storm coverage for tomorrow. The same for Wednesday. We'll keep temperatures just a little cooler with the additional clouds and showers. By Thursday and into Friday, the storm system that's nearby that's normally not supposed to be there is going to break down and pieces of it will just fly off and we'll see some more scattered downpours on Thursday. But getting back to more of a traditional sea breeze thunderstorm pattern, Pattern for Friday all the way through Monday. But of course, that pattern has already brought us nearly a foot of additional rain 
in just the last couple of months. So there you go. Martha? It is wet. All right, Tom. It is almost back to school time in Central Florida. Enjoy Nine Family Connection for the Back to School Bash by sponsoring a student for just $20. Children will receive backpacks and books and haircuts, health screenings, and more. The event is this Sunday at the Amway Center. To sponsor a student or register to volunteer, visit NineFamily.com. Ahead tonight, strange noises outside a teenager's bedroom in the middle of the night. The eerie handwritten messages she says she woke up to that were on her window in the morning and the search for this man. Police believe he may have something to do with it. That's tonight on Eyewitness News at 10 on TV 27 and at 11 right here on Channel 9. What is ICFlorida.com? It gives us great insider information of what's going on locally. If I go to the IC Florida app, it's easy for me to see what's new and what's hot. If SD is there, you're yeah. there. And SD is everywhere. Having the food critic on here, Scott Joseph, definitely helps to see what's good, what's not. It makes you feel like you're part of this town, so why not? IC Florida, go local, go fun! Go inside Central Florida with ICFlorida.com. Brought to you by Daytona Beach. Orlando Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram is turning up the heat during the summer clearance event. I'm Gary Voss's Lisa, new Dodge Challenger or Jeep Compass starting at only $99 a month. Two hot deals, $99 a month. Shop online or visit us at Orlando Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram on West Colonial Drive. Help us make sure thousands of local students receive health screenings, backpacks, and resources they need at the Back to School Bash, July 29th at the Amway Center. You can help by sponsoring a student for just $20. Donate today at 9family.com. At Channel 9 Eyewitness News, we know you need more than just a five-day forecast. That's why we use the tools here in Severe Weather Center 9 to break down the science behind your weather. We take you beyond the numbers to focus on how weather impacts your life, giving you a first-hand perspective so you'll always have the full story. Every day, every newscast. Channel 9 Eyewitness News is weather coverage you can count on. Hi, I'm SD with IC Florida. SD definitely helps me find the hidden gems around Orlando. This is the other hidden gem in Central Florida. Do you know about it? SD makes people very excited. <laughs> if SD is there, we are there. ICFlorida.com. Go local. Go fun. Selfless service is the principle that guides Army National Guard soldiers to be ready whenever disaster strikes. They have a stake in the well-being of the neighborhoods where they live and work. They train part-time to be ready to serve at all times. Selfless service. It's what inspires the men and women of the Army National Guard to be part of something greater than themselves. Visit NationalGuard.com to learn more. Storms here can move 65 miles an hour. I've covered tornadoes moving at almost 70. At Channel 9, we have the most advanced technology. We're looking for signs of spin, rotation, in case a tornado drops out. That's why we have the experienced team that we have. We want to give you the time frame of when the storm's going to hit. We can let you know where a storm's going to be, when it's going to be there, and what you need to know to stay safe. This is what we do. We take pride in this. I'm going to be here, and we're all going to be here, and that's coverage you can count on. When severe weather happens, you can get alerts on your phone from your location on the Channel 9 Weather app. Plus, get live radar anytime and hour-by-hour -hour forecasts. Download the Channel 9 Weather app. It's available right now in the App Store and on Google Play. Just search WFTV. Don't miss a moment. I got irritable bowel syndrome. And you thought a light gray suit was a good <laughs> idea. <laughs> on Family Feud. Weeknights at 7 on TV 27. Welcome back. You probably had a better weekend than Orlando City. The Lions pelted with another loss, another horrible decision by a ref, and rumors that one of their players wants out. Orlando is in talks with several teams trying to move Justin Merrim. That's according to MLSsoccer.com. Merrim was traded from Columbus to Orlando before the season and reportedly wants to go back to the crew. But the Lions gave up more than a million dollars and an international roster spot to get him. They want nothing less in return. Merrim has only scored one goal this season and called this the hardest four months of his career. But Orlando City had bigger problems on Saturday, like the ref in the final minutes, and somehow called this a penalty. R.J. Allen whistled for the foul right there when clearly the Columbus player was just fishing for a call. Columbus scored on the penalty, added another goal to win the game. MLS has instant replay, but the ref declined to look at it, leaving Orlando City and its fans frustrated. 
Look, I'm not going to speak about the referee. That everyone else at home can see can see what's gone on. That's it's just really, really disappointing for the players because the players didn't deserve that tonight. They're back home Thursday. In baseball, Tim Tebow will not play in the major leagues this season or maybe not any other league either. The college football analyst injured his hand. The Mets said it is a broken bone that will keep him out six to eight weeks. Tebow had started to play better recently with hits in 13 of his last 14 games. And another former Gator news, Ryan Lochte has been banned from competitive swimming again, this time for 14 months. Lochte posted this picture on social media receiving an IV infusion at a clinic in Gainesville. It was not a banned substance, but anti-doping rules say athletes can't receive IVs outside of certain situations, like if they were hospitalized. Lochte was scheduled to compete in the national championships later this week. George, Martha? All right, Joe, thank you for that, and thank you for watching Channel 9 Eyewitness News at 6. ABC's World News tonight with David Muir is up next, and for updates in between our newscasts, it's simple. Check out WFCB.com. George and I'll see you back here tonight at 10 and 11. That is the plan. <laughs>
Learn life's greatest lessons on Seinfeld's Guide to Social Norms. This is normal. Avoid yelling or screaming with anger. One should never play with one's food. Don't be a slave to fashion. But sure. And never do this in polite company. Discover more social norms to follow on Seinfeld five times a week. This is an ideology I can embrace. Weeknights at 6 on TV 27. What is icflorida.com? It gives us great insider information of what's going on locally. If I go to the IC Florida app, it's easy for me to see what's new and what's hot. If SD is there, you're, you're there. there. And SD is everywhere. Having the food critic on here, Scott Joseph, definitely helps to see what's good, what's not. It makes you feel like you're part of this town, so why not? IC Florida, go local, go fun! Go inside Central Florida with icflorida.com. Brought to you by Daytona Beach.
When weather is at its worst, count on the team in Severe Weather Center 9, alerting you first when storms move in, keeping you connected when it matters most. The tools you need to track weather where you live, with insight from Chief Meteorologist Tom Terry and the experts who know Central Florida. Any screen, anywhere, so you're informed when it matters most. Severe Weather Center 9, coverage you can count on. Let me just a little bit like, give me 10 minutes. We know mornings are tough. You have things to do, places to, whoa, is that still good? Ugh, no. That's why Channel 9 Eyewitness News is here for you. This isn't small talk on a couch. It's real news from journalists with real experience. A weather forecast you can actually use. Storms are going to pop up right when the kids get out of school. And a traffic expert who knows more than just I-4. So I just worked out this alternate route. Channel 9 Eyewitness News this morning, weekdays at 5.
We know mornings are tough. You have things to do, places to go. Is that still good? Uh, no. That's why Channel 9 Eyewitness News is here for you. This isn't small talk on a couch. It's real news from journalists with real experience. A weather forecast you can actually use. Storms are going to pop up right when the kids get out of school. And a traffic expert who knows more than just I-4. I just worked out this alternate route. Channel 9 Eyewitness News this morning, weekdays at 5. We're on to you, corruption. Government waste, your time is up. And all you scams and rip-offs out there, your days are numbered. Because Nine Investigates is coming after you. Every day, we're exposing the lies, loopholes, and con artists trying to cheat us all. Nine Investigates, only on Channel 9 Eyewitness News. It's coverage you can count on.
Flash flood warning is now in effect for Tallahassee, Florida. Keeping a NOAA radio in your home will alert you of any dangerous weather in the area. In the event of a flash flood, be prepared to evacuate to a safe location. Secure all important documents and belongings and avoid areas subject to flooding. Follow your pre-planned evacuation route and never drive through flooded roadways. Keep you and your family safe. Get a plan. Selfless service is the principle that guides Army National Guard soldiers to be ready whenever disaster strikes. They have a stake in the well-being of the neighborhoods where they live and work. They train part-time to be ready to serve at all times. Selfless service. It's what inspires the men and women of the Army National Guard to be part of something greater than themselves. Visit NationalGuard.com to learn more.
Now you can get Channel 9 Eyewitness News updates on your Amazon Echo device. How cool is this? You ask a question, Alexa, what's in the news today? And it gives you an answer. Here's your flash briefing from WFTV in Orlando. Good morning, everyone. I'm Channel 9's Jamie Holmes. Today, the union's representing... To get news updates, open the Alexa app on your phone, search WFTV under Skills, then enable the flash briefing. Storms here can move 65 miles an hour. I've covered tornadoes moving at almost 70. At Channel 9, we have the most advanced technology. We're looking for signs of spin, rotation, in case a tornado drops out. That's why we have the experienced team that we have. We want to give you the time frame of when the storm's going to hit. We can let you know where a storm's going to be, when it's going to be there, and what you need to know to stay safe. This is what we do. We take pride in this. I'm going to be here, and we're all going to be here, and that's coverage you can count on.
soldiers in the Army National Guard live up to a set of time-honored principles. They stand ready to respond to any crisis. They serve in their communities as citizens and as soldiers. They train part-time to be ready to serve at all times. Learn more at NationalGuard.com. What is ICFlorida.com? It gives us great insider information of what's going on locally. If I go to the IC Florida app, it's easy for me to see what's new and what's hot. If SD is there, you're there. there. And SD is everywhere. Having the food critic on here, Scott Joseph, definitely helps to see what's good, what's not. Nice. It makes you feel like you're a part of this town, so why not? IC Florida, go local, go fun! Go inside Central Florida with ICFlorida.com. Brought to you by Daytona Beach.
off. You have things to do, places to... Whoa, is that still good? Uh, no. That's why Channel 9 Eyewitness News is here for you. This isn't small talk on a couch. It's real news. From journalists with real experience. A weather forecast you can actually use. Storms are going to pop up right when the kids get out of school today. And a traffic expert who knows more than just I-4. FHP is working this crash, so I just worked out this alternate route to cut your drive time in half. Channel 9 Eyewitness News this morning. Weekdays at 5. Touchdown. Trust the team in Severe Weather Center 9 to give you weather coverage you can count on.
is Orlando. This is where we believe in magic and fantasies and wishing upon stars and the power of the imagination. This is where we believe in dreams and seeing them come true. This is Orlando, known around the world as the home of happiness and to those who live here happily as home. This is more than just a place to stay a while. It's a place to stay on the cutting edge. Here, innovation comes in every form, entertainment in every variety, and thriving businesses in every size. So if you think you know all there is to know about Orlando, prepare to be surprised. Because until you get to really know this place, this community, and see all the reasons why it's so magical, rest assured, you don't know the half of it.
Power 95.3. It's a lot of bad things. Power 95.3. Why don't you just meet me in the middle? Two hours commercial free. At 1130, 430, and 830. Power 95.3. That moment when Steve kept it real. How big are your lips? You blind? <laughs> that moment Josh went TMI. I got irritable bowel syndrome. <laughs> And you thought wearing a light gray suit was a good idea? <laughs> that moment when Steve learned a new dance. Oh, I go down there. <laughs> well, I ain't no up, though. Don't miss a moment on Family Feud. Weeknights at 7 on TV 27.
live with such a, a unique climate here in Central Florida, and we know that storms can turn severe in a moment's notice. A million watt radar can keep you ahead of that storm. We can give you earlier warning when a storm happens. We could track these storms right down to street level, and we have all the tools here in Severe Weather Center 9 to keep you safe. It's more than just all the data. We have great data, but it comes down to, I think, the experience that we have. So no matter what does happen with that storm, we're going to be here for you. That's our promise. Definitely gonna watch that. I'll be there for you. Loving this. Friends, weekdays at four on TV 27.
At Channel 9 Eyewitness News, we know you need more than just a five-day forecast. That's why we use the tools here in Severe Weather Center 9 to break down the science behind your weather. We take you beyond the numbers to focus on how weather impacts your life, giving you a first-hand perspective so you'll always have the full story. Every day, every newscast. Channel 9 Eyewitness News is weather coverage you can count on. Give me 10 minutes. We know mornings are tough. You have things to do, places to... Whoa, is that still good? Ugh, no. That's why Channel 9 Eyewitness News is here for you. This isn't small talk on a couch. It's real news from journalists with real experience. A weather forecast you can actually use. Storms are going to pop up right when the kids get out of school. And a traffic expert who knows more than just I-4. I just worked out this alternate route. Channel 9 Eyewitness News this morning, weekdays at 5.
Keeping a NOAA radio in your home will alert you of any dangerous weather in the area. In the event of a flash flood, be prepared to evacuate to a safe location. Secure all important documents and belongings and avoid areas subject to flooding. Follow your pre-planned evacuation route and never drive through flooded roadways. Keep you and your family safe. Get a plan. When weather is at its worst, count on the team in Severe Weather Center 9. Alerting you first when storms move in. Keeping you connected when it matters most. The tools you need to track weather where you live. With insight from Chief Meteorologist Tom Terry and the experts who know Central Florida. Any screen, anywhere, so you're informed when it matters most. Severe Weather Center 9. Coverage you can count on.
delays or rain delays. When hurricanes hit home or tornadoes touch down, when experience really matters, no one knows your weather like Chief Meteorologist Tom Terry and the experts in Severe Weather Center 9. Tracking storms down to your street with earlier warnings so you have more time to prepare when you need it most. Trust the team in Severe Weather Center 9 to give you weather coverage you can count on. When you watch Eyewitness News at 10, we're going to make it worth your while. It's not the news you already know. It's new local stories happening now. Investigations that give you better perspective from local neighborhoods. Inside sources reveal it's a major community problem that's been ignored for years. Weather conditions change every minute. That's why I'm constantly tracking your local forecast. I'm Martha Sigalski. And I'm George Estevez. Join us for Channel 9 Eyewitness News at 10 on TV 27.
soldiers in the Army National Guard live up to a set of time-honored principles. They stand ready to respond to any crisis. They serve in their communities as citizens and as soldiers. They train part-time to be ready to serve at all times. Learn more at NationalGuard.com. Now you can get Channel 9 Eyewitness News updates on your Amazon Echo device. How cool is this? You ask a question, Alexa, what's in the news today? And it gives you an answer. Here's your flash briefing from WFTV in Orlando. Good morning, everyone. I'm Channel 9's Jamie Holmes. Today, the union's representing... To get news updates, open the Alexa app on your phone, search WFTV under Skills, then enable the flash briefing. 